Let's do the jazz hands. We're live. Put your big girl panties on. Hank Strange and Walter Keller. We are here. We're live. It's Friday. It's like episode 58 <laughs> of the oh. Who Moves My Freedom podcast. Time Walter. for a beer. <laughs> yeah, Walter's already getting liquored up. No, I ain't getting liquored, liquored up. up. Not yet. What's this? What's this special British beer that you're drinking? No, this is just Sto uh, Stella. 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 Yeah, I thought it wasn't that. Isn't that that British beer you were it's drinking made, the other day? This is made in Belgium. Oh, Belgium. Oh, excuse me. Made by the Belgians. Sure. There you go. I actually, I like, uh, I like Belgium. Been to Brussels a bunch of times. So there you go. There's yeah. uh, Trump rooster. Trump rooster causing trouble. Okay, so we're live. We're here. What's up, people? It's Friday. We're talking about um, what do you guys do to get prepared for hurricanes? Walter is under the impression that we're going to be getting hit with a hurricane here in Florida, or at least in his well, part one, of Florida. One thing you want to do for hurricane prep is go to the liquor store before they shut them down. Because they do shut the liquor stores down once, they're, once they go into a hurricane warning. So, Yeah, so um, just, just keep liquor in your house at all times, <laughs> basically. Right, Walter? <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know, alcohol and, and, and beers and, you know, things like that are always uh, in demand when, you know. Yeah. Now, do people in Florida need an excuse to keep liquor in their house? I don't think so. Uh, there's always, I'm probably the only Floridian who at any given moment you come to my house, there's no liquor. Because I don't really, um, I don't really drink. So if someone's people are coming over to hang out, I have to especially go get some beer. Well, you know. Yeah, I mean, you know, Lola likes having a good drink every now and then, just so she can deal with me. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, but I am off the chains on my own, and uh, I find that if in the, the cell, you know, the couple of times I do drink, it just knocks me out. Well, I don't even drink coffee. Oh, I don't either. So. Yeah, I don't. I don't really need coffee to you know be any crazier than I am already. Uh, coffee does the same thing; just puts me to sleep. No. Yeah, I'm telling you. If I have coffee, I'll you know I'm like I'll get a little whatever you're supposed to get out of the coffee for about it lasts about ten fifteen minutes. Little buzz, and then, yeah. And then I'm knocked out. So I don't drink coffee. I I drink tea though. I do drink tea. Well, you still get so, caffeine out of the tea, don't you? I guess. You know, but I'm just so used to drinking the tea, so. You'll have a spot of tea, will you? Yeah, a spot of tea, spot of tea, a little cuppa, a little yeah, cuppa, do you? Yeah. All right, so <laughs> we are, we're going to talk about that. You guys can let us know what you're doing to get prepared for, or what you, you know, probably where you are, there may not be hurricanes, maybe some other things. You might have forest fires, you might have tornadoes. earthquakes. Yeah, tornadoes. Tornadoes are really bad. That shit scares the hell out of me. So. Yeah. And mm -hmm. all other kinds of pestilence, like Lola's from Maryland, and in Maryland, what's those things you people have? Cicadas. Cicadas. Yeah, every they have seven years. Every seven years, they have cicadas, and I have been there, and it's batshit crazy when those damn things come out. It's scary. Oh, it's man. it's it's biblical. <laughs> <laughs> it is really really crazy. Um, I don't know if that's like a bad thing, or I, I don't know if it does that much damage to anyone, but they are totally disgusting. I guess you could eat those things. You could always fry them up. Ugh. But I have, I have had uh, in my life. I have eaten fried flying insects one time. Someone tricked me into that. So, yeah. So let us know what kind of stuff you guys have. What do you do to prepare for it? We're going to talk about that and a whole bunch of other gun stuff tonight. It's just me and Walter, so it might get a little off the rails. Off the wall. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say that right now. Now, don't forget to like this video. Click the thumbs up. Like the video. Don't forget to share this video with your friends and family on social media. And, of course, make sure you're subscribed to us, you yep. know. And I want to say what's up to everyone that's hanging out in the, in the, um, in the chat. Let me yep. go down here. Um, hit me up if I miss you here. But we got Lawrence Lerwick. He was the first one in the chat today, Lawrence. And then Tyvon Show is in the chat. Uh, Meredith's Mayhem. Joe Carpenter is in there. Chris B, of course, always here. These guys are always here. So uh, Jake Arnold. Lola is in the chat, of course, if you guys want to go talk to Lola. Anyone who has not gotten their uh, Trump rooster thing, you need to talk to Lola about that. Oh, man, you guys are so. killing me. <laughs> <laughs> because at a certain point, Walter's not going to let us give any more of these away. You're going to have to buy them. 
<laughs> so if you, I know there was someone um, last night that was asking me about this. Chris Bolas is in there. Uh, Jackson Ullman, I see, is in there. Shut up and play your guitar. There you go. Shut up and play your guitar is up in there. Matthew May is in there. What's up, Matthew May? I haven't seen Matthew May in, uh, uh, hanging out. DC2 Mega Boost. Mr. Some Guns. Oh. Av Torres. There you go. Lots of people, man, in the chat hanging out with us. Oh, yeah, man. Lots of folks. Lots of folks in there. So, yeah, do it now with the, with the Trump rooster because two things are going to happen. One... Walter is selling these, so he's not in the limited yeah, a amount. Lot had, a lot of people have bought them, so you guys yeah. have nothing. You yeah. <laughs> so Walter's going to cut off the supply on that. <laughs> and uh, two, these are like limited edition, right, Walter? You're not. You're you're going on to another thing after this, right? Yeah, yeah, so. they're, yeah they're limited. Yeah, buy buy them. Buy them quick, quick, quick. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, there you go. There you go. So um, we've done that. Uh, what else do I need to do? I don't know if I've missed anything else. So, and we will have some guns. What kind of guns do you want to show the people tonight, Walter? I got a whole lineup of bolt action World War II yeah. and just post-war right. um, military rifles here. So, okay, cool. I see Rod M2 also in there. James Killian. He says the patch is cool. The patch is cool. Okay, thank you. Now, and I remember, if Lola is hooking you guys up with a patch, you got to help us out and do some sharing. Yeah, yeah, you got to spread yeah. the love. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Jackson, STDs, none of that stuff. Just spread the love. That's yeah, it. spread the love digitally. <laughs> yeah, we yeah. don't care about things that go viral digitally. Viruses, <laughs> digital viruses are okay. <laughs> don't make your DNA go viral. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jackson Ullman says. I think he says he lives in. He used to live in Oklahoma, so uh, tornadoes don't, yeah, don't scare him. No, one thing about tornadoes. Oh, he says, well, now he has kids. It's a different story. So yeah, there you go. tornadoes, you don't get no chance to get away. You know, nine times out of ten, you know, it, shit hits the fan before you can even get out of the way. And the thing that gets me always about these people in these hurricanes is they stay home. You know, and, and, and you know. well, I think it depends on where you, where you are, right? So Lola and I have lived through, um, like, what did we live through? Uh, two Category Fives and a bunch of other hurricanes in West Palm Beach back in what was that? Two thousand three. Yeah, so I think it was two thousand three and four. Um, what, what was, uh, Katrina was what, 2004? That was 2000. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So in that, in that same time period, we got hit with stuff and all that in, uh, West Palm beach. And we, we stayed in the house, but we had, our house was built of cinder blocks and we had hurricane shutters and all that stuff. We did lose electricity and everything. Yeah. So we have, that's what we've gone through. Um, um yeah, and of course we've both lived in, in third world countries. Yeah, so power going out is a normal thing. Yeah, it's not big. It, like when, whenever the power goes out, I'm like, oh, this reminds me of when I was a little kid. <laughs> what about the candles? Yeah, so I don't panic. My kids, on the other hand, <laughs> they're like, what the hell is happening? I, I don't panic. It, you know, that's, a, that's, that's another subject we can talk about too, adults and panic. Yeah. And their kids, and their kids, yes. Absolutely. So what do you do, Walter? You're, oh, are you concerned that one of these hurricanes, I think we are talking about Irma, are you yeah, concerned that that's coming to Florida? Because do we know what the path is? Well, the latest predictions or the latest guesses kind of point some of it toward us and some of it up up the East Coast. So, you know, it's one of those things you got to have to keep an eye on. I'm not like going in, the, in hurricane mode yet. I'm not buying yeah. gas or anything like that yet. But, but you are a prepper. Right. I mean, in general, you're already prepped for a lot of things, right? I have chainsaws and generators, and you know, and and Humvees. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, one thing, my house. You know, when I bought a house, I and Safety Harbor is right by the water, so we looked at houses where you look out, you get down in the look down at the street level, and there's the water right down the end of the street, and I'm like, no, no, uh, uh. So our, my house is 20 feet above sea level where we live, so. It would have to be major. We have flood insurance too. I'm the crazy person that has flood insurance when I'm that high up. But if you get like a Cat Five, you could have 30 feet of water. So, yeah. um, you know, better. You know, it's, it's yeah. Relatively for that area, 30 feet above sea level is probably not bad, right? Well, 20. Yeah, where I'm at, 20 feet. That's there's places that are actually right. higher in Pinellas County. Yeah. Uh, if you look at a flood map in Pinellas County, if it ever were to happen bad, there'd be it turned into two islands basically. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> uh, and my son, where we, we bought my son's house, where he's living, it's up high too. So, um, you know, we could have we could have Fort One and Fort Two. 
Yeah. So now here's the thing. You might not be directly affected by the flooding, but you can still have power go out. And, uh, well, you know, any place you've lived, I mean, Safety Harbor hasn't had a hurricane in, since 70 years or more. So all those big oak trees will all be on the ground. Yeah. You know, and if you don't have a chainsaw or something like that, you're going to be stuck in your house. Yeah. Or and I see you have a house left after the trees fall on it, you know, so. Yeah, I see that. Like, who said this? Um, Chris Bullis says, "With a hurricane, you get a warning. You don't with a tornado." Right. Um, and um, and hurricanes could spin off little tornadoes. Oh, oh right? yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, definitely. yeah. Because that happens in the Gainesville area all the time. So yes. a lot of times, like if there's hurricanes going up and down, because we're kind of north central Florida in Gainesville. So hurricanes going up and down may not directly affect. We might get the the squalls and stuff like that, but but they can still spin off tornadoes in some places and they do okay. some serious damage and yeah you don't get that much of a warning about that yeah not in florida you know it's not like out west where they start blowing the the sirens and it's coming you can see it coming usually mm -hmm. in florida when it happens you're sitting there and all of a sudden kaboom <laughs> yeah yeah so i think like what walter is saying i think that's the first thing because we're, we're going to talk a little bit about what we do and then we'll talk about the folks that are hanging out watching this with us and what they do i think um with us, like you're saying, Walter, the first thing is really think about where you live. If, right. if you have that option, I get it that not everyone has the option of where they live, or maybe you found a place you really like, so you're not moving. You know, the price is right. You know, you, you know, yeah. but, but, but you should think about it because so with Lola and I, when we came to live and we live outside of Gainesville, um, because we went through those uh, hurricanes and we saw everything that happened from that, I thought about where I was going to go live. And we, we went north, you know, Florida is, I mean, it's a peninsula, so you know how that goes. It's not a lot of, I can't remember what's the highest point in Florida. It's 300 and something feet is the highest part. In Florida. Yeah, we're not that high up. I think we might be like 90 something feet above sea level where we are yeah. in our particular place. Um, but we thought about all of this because we lived through those things. So we're kind of like in the middle and we thought about where we are. Um, Water gets absorbed really fast where we live because we have a lot of sugar sand. But we have all these little, uh, what do you call these, pockets of uh, water that are underneath. Uh, you know, like all the springs. We live in an area Aquifer, where there's a lot of springs. Aquifer. Aquifers, yeah, I think that's the way to refer to them. Yeah. And that helps because we, we then have access to our own well. So we're not on city water or anything. Right, 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 right. Um, so we have that kind of stuff. We thought about all of this. When we went yeah. to live there, and I think that's the first thing if you can do that, right? Yeah, I mean, you, you, you know, if you can do it and you can swing it, you want to try to get in the best position you can, so you don't you don't end up like, well, well. Normally, if you if people in Houston, a lot of the those people have never had been flooded because they've never had five feet of water in that such a short period of time, or five feet of water ever. So. Um, yeah. Um, what was someone saying to me today that that's a thousand year flood? So that happens once every thousand years. Yeah. I mean, that's a biblical kind of flood in Houston. I mean, that's, I just saw it this afternoon. Uh, some, one of my friends, uh, Sean, you know, Sean. Uh, yeah. Darren, he posted me, a, he sent me a, a, a picture of, or a video of, of military trucks, I guess, that went out to help or something. And, and all you can see is the very tops of the roofs of the trucks. Mm -hmm. So that means that water is probably six or seven feet deep right, where those guys were canoeing past. Or like the Cajun Navy guys with their, with their, with their boats and their John boats going past. So, yeah. That's a, lot of, it, that's a lot of water. <laughs> yeah, and it and it's variable in different places because I was watching a video with um, Demolition Ranch. He went in to do some stuff. I think he took some jet skis out there. Yeah, and um, that's what they were using. But there were some places that the water was so low that they messed up the jet skis. It looked like. Yeah, if you get too low, it'll suck the stuff up into the pump and. Yeah, I think they had like he had a puncture in one of those jet skis. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you need to have like a John boat with a what they call a go devil, those yeah. engines with the long shaft. Yeah. No sense so, sense. so that's now that's another good thing. Now, obviously, not everyone can, um, not everyone has their own transportation, much less if you do have your own transportation, you don't get to get cool vehicles like that. But you do have, don't you have an amphibious vehicle? What is that yeah. thing you have? I don't have anything that swims. Oh, you don't? Oh, okay. I have the Pinsgauer. The Pinsgauer could go up about uh, up to the rub rails, which are about three and a half feet. Oh, uh, so that's the safe. Uh, the 1078, the big truck, that can go probably four feet or so. The, wait, uh, okay, the 10. What's that big, massive truck that you have that oh, you yeah, can put like a shipping truck. container on it? The Mark 48. Yeah, the Mark 48 can probably forward 
four feet of water pretty easy without flooding out probably higher than that pushing it a little bit but um yeah you, you got to be careful you know that you're driving through that water and you don't know where you're going next thing you know it's 10 feet deep because okay. you drove off in a ditch and yeah, it's it's bad juju oh i don't know why i thought that thing was amphibious no so, no you don't have an amphibious vehicle no, that's on the list. Trust it's me. on the list. On so the what? <laughs> now, this, people are gonna think this is crazy. But what? How much shell water can a Humvee go through? Probably not that much. They say thirty inches. Mm -hmm. uh, before you have to start worrying about it getting sucked into the engine. Mm -hmm. um, you can get a fording kit and you can go underwater with it. But. Um, <laughs> oh really? How are you gonna drive when you're, you know? Yeah, you're, yeah. You're gonna you're gonna have to have scuba gear. <laughs> right, 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 right. So, yeah. and okay. you know, as soon as you suck some water in, you hydro lock the engine. It's done. The engine's ruined. So you gotta be careful mm -hmm. with that. So, yeah. And then as soon as you get out of the water, you gotta do all the maintenance on the axles and the transmission because they get water in them and stuff like that. So. Yeah. So maybe the best thing, the most affordable thing, would just be to have some kind of boat, right? Like maybe like well, a single you know, motor. <laughs> You have, yeah, well, I could joke with the uh, family from New Orleans. Is if, if I ever build a house there, I'm going to have a John Boyd on the second story on the porch. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, and, and if I need to get out, I can get out in the John boat. But um, um, What's a John boat? There's aluminum. There's aluminum. They're usually green colored aluminum boats. Okay. Um, did you forget to uh, put your phone on vibrate? Um, only when your wife sends me a text, that's all. Oh, 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 okay. Yes, okay. I did. Yes, I did. Blame it on Lola. Blame it on Lola. He's blaming it on you, Lola. Oh, okay, no. So those, so a John, okay, Ringer a John. is silent now. <laughs> I just got the vibration thing going on now. So a John boat, like a Cabela's or something like that, is like 250 bucks. I see them for like a, uh, around 100 bucks. Yeah, you can, you I see pick, some small ones even cheaper. Yeah, you can pick them up used pretty cheap, but, you know, yeah. um. Yeah, flat bottom, like Mr. Sumgun's saying. Yeah, flat bottom. Flat bottom. Yeah, aluminum boat or plywood, you know, boat type boat. Um, yeah, they oh, shallow. So okay, so those are cheap. So if you were gonna put that, you're saying just put it up on the roof? Yeah, just as fun. You just tie it up on the on the side of the of the back porch or something, and you know, on the back porch. Okay, yeah. You but might you, not, you might not ever need it, but if you need to, you know, if, if the levee breaks again, then you you got a way out, you know. So. Yeah, no, that's not a bad thing. Um, that's and a, how you how you can leave that out there for some time, right? They're aluminum. <laughs> you can leave it in your yard forever. You know, it's Florida. It's gonna outlive you. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, I'm just wondering about paint and stuff like that because Florida will the sun here will eat your paint. I don't know about the sun anywhere else. Yeah, well, you know, every every so often, give it a nice coat of drab olive paint, you know, and, and you're yeah, good. Yeah, just hit hit it with some spray. So now, if you were doing something like here that, that uh, here was some of that stuff that you know you can make a boat out of screen stuff with it, uh, um, the seal stuff. What is oh, it? Oh, the see Oh, what's that quick seal thing? The guy, <laughs> those guys are in Florida too. I forgot yes, their name. Yeah, they're down toward uh, Fort I believe. Yeah, yeah, they have an infomercial where you pray. Is it quick seal? Is that what it's called? Uh, I have That's, something here, but I have to go another. Yeah. Yeah. So, what else would you keep in that thing? Um, like well, uh, flotation devices, maybe. Yeah, you know, it, it's more of a joke than it is serious to have the John boat tied to your house. But, you know, a set of maybe a set of oars, and who knows, maybe even a little motor, just in case you need it. But, mm -hmm. uh, you know, no, uh, it, it sounds like it's a joke for people, but there are people who literally oh. got trapped in their homes. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. In, in Houston, and they had okay. Someone says you should get a gamma goat. I, gamma goats are cool, but gamma goats are oh, loud. Those look cool. Those they're what? They're loud. They're loud and they do float. Oh, I like gamma goats. They kind of float precariously. Um, oh. And what if you put pontoons on the sides of them? Pontoon on your gamma goat. Um, <laughs> I, I like. I just like the name of it. Gamma, gamma goat. It's cool. I I had a friend. That I know. I know some guys that have them down here. Flex seal. Flex seal. Flex seal. That's it. Bingo. Yeah. Thanks to uh, 904 Outdoors, it would be 904 Outdoors who knows about Flex Seal. <laughs> <laughs> it would be Steve. You can have a screen door boat. <laughs> uh, Steve probably has 904 uses for some Flex Seal. <laughs> that, would, hey, that would be a good, that would be some good videos. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, I just trademarked that. Trademark Kank Strange, 2017. <laughs> 904 uses. You can't use it, Steve, unless you get prior approval. Yep. You, it's public now. You can't do it no more. Um, <laughs> yeah, someone says gun with a good flashlight. Who is that that says that? Uh, Lola's. Well, that's Lola's another thing, too. You know, um, 
You got it. Have you, you seen the you seen the video of the guy out? Steve, oh, Steve Watson. Okay. Uh huh. Go ahead. You see the video of the um the guy out in front of the convenience store with a shotgun protecting it. Yes, I think we were talking about that the other day before you came on. Yeah. Um. And, you know, yeah. and everybody kind of chuckles about that and thinks that's funny, but you know. Uh, look at the LA riots back when the LA riots happened. The Koreans in the Korean neighborhoods were up on the roof. That's, yeah, that's what Babyface was talking about. They were up on the roofs with Daewoo rifles and they shot people. They didn't mess around. If you showed up with a gun, they shot you. So um, mm -hmm. they they weren't taking no. There was no uh, no excuses for those Korean dudes. So bust them. Right. Heart. Yeah. Now, so if some stuff goes down like that, are you going to be over at the at the shop? Well, yeah. It's it's a harder thing. You got to protect your home you gotta protect your shot yeah, yeah. You know, um i mean for those if that's everything that you have and and um i think your your property is valuable and people should not take your property even right. you know in situations like this it's not an excuse to do it um yeah. there's you know, um, but there's you should prioritize yeah i don't know that the, the statute but in florida there's um there's statute about um, that kind of stuff, natural disaster stuff, where if somebody shows up, you're in your front yard and guy shows up and he comes walking in your front yard with a gun coming towards you, you can blast him. You can just shoot yeah. him. Spot, yeah. you know? Right. Well, that yeah, happened, I mean, we've that, got that, stand your ground. <laughs> that happened. That it was way before that happened during Andrew. You know, mm -hmm. this guy was in his front yard and a whole carload of them showed up and they jumped out and started coming toward him. He just opened up on them. Wait, are you saying uh, like this is a special um, disaster yeah, during, rules? Yes. Yeah, during times of, of, natural disasters and emergencies mm -hmm. and stuff yeah yeah the law changes a little bit you know so you know for all the for all those uh, looter wannabes out there it's not a good yeah. idea <laughs> i know it's a terrible thing unfortunately we're not going to be able to do anything about the people who want to loot except in that moment <laughs> you know you, your butt shouldn't be out there looting if anything you should be helping you should be helping people first though you know like the saying goes charity begins at home right so right. first we, think think about right. your family Right. There's a lot of there's a, there's been there's been a lot of that from the Houston thing. People are helping each other and yeah, you know these you know oh look at the black guy helping the white guy. Look at you know look at it's like you know, uh, you know what that is. Uh, and unfortunately, as Americans, as human beings, it seems like we need these horrible things to happen, which yeah, we don't yeah, want to happen. It yeah. it, bring, it brings out the worst and it brings out the best. Yeah, yeah. we need we need things as human beings, I guess, to remind us that we are human beings and we're all brothers and we're all on this planet together. We haven't figured a way to really interstellar travel or get out of here or go up. Stargate. I got oh. the Stargate. Come on. <laughs> you got the Stargate. Sure. Okay. Uh, you know, not everyone's getting to that Stargate. But the thing is, is that when stuff, it's like 9-11 and so many things that have to happen to us to remind us that we're brothers. We're all in this together. Yeah, you know, and we, and we should be trying to help each other out, you know. Um, yeah, well, so oh, yeah, um, I uh, Lola's giving me a thing right now that it says, uh, when did this story come up, Lola? Today, it tells, no, it tells you 2014 or 15. Oh, yeah, back in 2014, it says Governor Scott signs emergency Florida conceal bill. It will now be legal for gun owners in the Sunshine State to temp temporarily carry concealed handguns without a permit during periods when the sun isn't shining so bright. During natural disasters. And yeah. 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 Now law, uh, the law, a measure to allow law-abiding citizens without concealed carry licenses to bear arms during declared mandatory evacuations, a reboot of a failed 2014 bill, bill that was killed a last minute. Uh, due to political maneuvering. Okay, that's a good thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, everybody, common everybody, sense. Everybody gives Rick Scott a hard time. You know, a lot of people. Oh, you know, he's ripped off. He's stealing money. Blah blah blah. But he's been a he's been very uh, Second Amendment friendly. So, you know, if and I would I would take I would take Rick Scott over a Democrat that, that wants to hand everything out for free any day. So, yeah. I mean, I don't like anyone that takes away any kind of. You know, my my big thing is guns. Don't take any. Yeah, yeah. Or don't restrict, you know, don't restrict yeah. my right to, to protect myself and my property. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So now, realistically, what do you, you know what, let's go through um, some people's things. I think uh, Shut Up and Play Your Guitar said M R MREs, generators, kind of 100 thing. pounds of rice, 100 pounds of pasta and cereal. <laughs> oh, man, pasta. Woo, we've been going. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Four to 55 gallon water barrels, medical supplies. Yeah, I mean, you know, and, and as simple as, you know, if stuff's coming and you got a bathtub, 
put the plug in it and fill it up with water. You know, then you got you got fifty. Yeah, your bathtub. Yeah, fill it up with water. You know, um, gallon. I mean, anything you can put water in, fill it up with water before. Yeah. You know? I mean, don't throw the. I don't throw those uh, like big juice bottles out. Okay. You know, well, like the bigger juice bottles that you get for the kids. There's like uh, you know. There's ones that are a little okay. thicker. They last a little longer. I, I stack them up a little bit because those can easily be filled and then you could cover them up. Right. And then, um, you know, if you really had to, I guess you could treat that water. But that's more, look, when something like that goes down, just flushing is a big deal. Well, you, you know, yeah. that, when, that, when that happens, you, 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 you go outside with a shovel. Oh, well, yeah, before we start going outside yeah, don't with the fill shovel. Up, don't, fill up, don't fill up the potty in the house because you, you got to smell that stuff. So Yeah, on. but if you can flush, if you have water, oh, yeah, if you have water yeah, that you can flush with. Rainwater. Here, for example, you get a hurricane, you're going to – if you had five feet of rain, and if you had a couple drums, 55-gallon drums with a funnel on, you'd have two – you'd have 100 gallons of water sitting. Yeah. Rainwater, and rainwater is 100% drinkable. There's nothing wrong with rainwater, so. Yeah. Um, now, like for us, we actually have a um, we have a well, so there's a well pump. So if you have a generator, power. yeah, you gotta yeah. have got the power. Yeah. yeah, if you have a generator, you can hook up a generator to it. I need to do that project. I want to start doing some videos on the channel with these kinds of projects, like where I build up some solar panel arrays for certain right, things, right. and have some things um, set up where I could put generators on them. The well would be the first one because as long as you have a generator and you have the fuel. For right. that, then you can, um, you know, you can run that thing for some time and then get water to your house. You know, so you can flush so you, it. Yeah, yeah. So you'd be good to go. So and there's there's a there's a lot of different things you can do like that. Even, All of these things a, depend even, where you are. You know, even having a gallon of chlorine bleach, you know, like you use for bleaching clothes, walking doing the wash, a couple of drops of that in your water, and and your water's good to go. You know. It, yeah. Even if it is kind of fugly, you know, or boiling the water, or knowing how to, you know, simple as knowing how to go outside and grab some wood up and start a fire. Yeah, Stephen Watson says plastic drop cloths to cover broken windows on cars. Duct tape or windows. Yeah, duct tape. Duct tape. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know. I use. You were talking about storing water. I have military water, five gallon or twenty liter water jugs. You know, it's because oh, cool. you know I'm I'm the crazy military ballistic guy. You know. Yeah. So, but yeah, but. Uh, you know that stuff all comes in handy when it comes time to fill it up and before the storm comes. And if it doesn't storm, just pour it out. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's it's like when I buy twenty gallons of gasoline when the storms come, or thirty gallons of gasoline. I am just pour it in the car when when the storm goes away. I just use it in the car. It's no big deal. Yeah, there's always things you can find to do with those things. You probably want to have um, some way of storing some kind of fuel. Yeah, yeah, you definitely want to have, you know, want to fill your cars up. You want to have a few, it, yeah, if you can. You know, you can't yeah, do it when you're living in an apartment. It's kind of hard to have 15 gallons of fuel in your apartment. It's a little dangerous, but, you know, yeah. if you've got a backyard, you can have it out in the shed or out in the yard, and if the leads are sealed up, it can sit out in the rain. It ain't going to hurt nothing. Yeah, Vanessa Kitty says good solar panels with good charging circuitry for the type of batteries you have. I think that's a good thing. That's more, we probably should do more stuff like this. On the channel, man, like um, actually get out there and do some of this preparedness stuff. You can even have those solar panels stashed away, and you can have like a portable setup. So when something happens, you can stick them out and charge your batteries and mm -hmm. keep your cell. Well, you want I don't know if the cell will be down or not, but eventually know. it's going to go down. Typically, with the cell, with the um, with the cell stuff, it lasts as long as the batteries do for that. Right, right. Well, people always yeah. laugh. You know, they say, "Well, you have a landline still." Well, you know what? A lot of times when this, there's been times when this things are not working and you pick up the phone still and eh, there's a dial tone. So, yeah. Also, you can just get radios. You yeah, know, regular, yeah, regular old AM, FM radio. You can at least you can hear what's going on in the news. Yeah. But even there's um, not necessarily walkie talkies, but there are some two way radios that yeah, you can use up to some distance. Yeah, absolutely. You can keep track of the, you know, the, the tower on top of the house with the gun with the guy on the ground. Yeah. <laughs> yeah you know um um so jay hike says what guns do you take with you so uh, yeah i think i guess that's when it comes to the point of do you have to you know you can't shelter in place anymore and you got to go yeah I and mean, that would be that so you want to think about that because here's one of the things that you, you need to think about if you're winding up in a shelter somewhere you know, they're they're gonna, no gun. then yeah they're not going to want you to be armed no 
Yeah. which is unfortunate. I don't really want to um, do that. You know, that's why Lola and I, like, uh, I'll, I'm sorry about this, Walter. Let me just okay. say this before I forget about it. This is why Lola and I got that old RV. Now, I, I got crazy on the project. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, it happens sometimes. I don't always get crazy on the project, just most of the time. But you know that's why we got an old RV. I know everyone can't do that, but you but you can get an RV that's like an old RV, right? Not expensive, and you can keep them up where they're running. But that's a moving house. Yes, it is. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Let me, let me tell you what happened with us and the Boy Scouts. We went camp. We went to summer camp, and we were, and a tropical storm came in, and we got stuck going to a shelter, which I would never do normally, mm -hmm. and they basically. They have, they lock the door, they or they have sheriffs, and you can't leave. Yeah, I don't like the idea of going to a shelter. And, I've and never done it. You're being held, you're being held against your will. Yeah. And, you know, we were on the floor, and everybody was wet, and everybody was stinky, and it was just, it was, yeah. it just wasn't, it, was, it wasn't pleasant, just put it that way. So, if you can, afford, if you can, and, you know, you have the means, don't go to a shelter. Yeah, I'm not. I am not a proponent of going to shelters. I don't like it. I think you should go there if you don't have any choice, and if the situation right. gets there, don't have too much pride to not go there. Right. But you. But there's options now. You might not want to drop five thousand dollars getting an old RV, or you know, or, whatever. Or you might not have the credit card ability to go stay in a motel for. A week. Yeah. Or well, motels could could be crazy during times like that. But you can you can have tents and things like that because there's. Outdoor places that you can go that you won't have those rules. Yeah, you can camp. Yeah, I mean, yeah, and you're more flexible. I don't want to be in a place where they lock the doors and I can't no, leave. No, 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 no. You know, and I've got to ask their permission to leave. I don't want anyone was, to have to give me permission to come or go. I so was, when we were before they first they rounded us all up in the scout camp and we were like in the dining hall, which has got windows 360 degrees around. So if a tornado hit, you get you get shards of glass in the whole yeah. It wasn't very safe. That whole idea of putting people in lunch rooms or that, that those c concrete block, cinder block buildings that they put people in and, and stuff will fall down just like any other building if a tornado hits. Yeah, but Never there's so many there's so many things that can go wrong with that, right? I mean, people get <laughs> raped, robbed, all kinds of bad things well, happen. No, with the scouts, we were sitting there, you know, I was like, I was pissed off, you know, I wanted to leave, and they set a sheriff down to watch me. Oh wow. Yeah, I can imagine you. You can get, you know, you have been known to get a little bit belligerent. <laughs> they stayed, they took the sheriff right behind me. I wasn't going to start no trouble like that. But they, the guy was right behind me the whole time, and like, because I'd, I'd express my displeasure with this whole plan. Yeah. And um, they didn't like the fact that I resisted. Um, yeah. And, no. so, you know, I went to the shelter and we played, uh, it was a, at a school called Challenger. I think it was called Challenger. It was like a middle school. So I called it Camp Challenger for those two days we were at Camp Challenger. Yeah, but it's a big thing. If you know you can't deal with this, you don't want your family to be under these circumstances, there's yeah. a, there's several things you can do. Definitely tents and things like that are things that you can do. Um, rooftop tents for vehicles. I bought one. Um, I am. I put out like a quick video, but I'm working on a longer video of like what we bought, how we installed it. But you can get a rooftop tent for vehicles that can sleep you know, like we've got four in my family, so I got one that can sleep. Can you imagine? Can you imagine all four of you in that? In that yeah, room? that's not necessarily what you're going to want to do. But you can have all the tents, sleeping bags, and things like that. Well, and the reason people, some people could be in the vehicle, some people could yeah. be in the tent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You're, that's you're, kind you're, of like overlanding, which I'm getting into. I've been talking to you about it. I think we're going to go to overlanding east, right? Maybe. Yeah, yeah we right can here. do. Yeah. 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 So that's kind of like overlanding where, where you can sleep in your vehicle and you have a way, like Walter just said, two people can sleep in the vehicle, two people above it. Those kind of rooftop tents work on Jeeps and pickup trucks and you can mount them on top of SUVs. a trailer. Yeah, you can mount it on a trailer, you can mount it on top of like a Subaru, anything with a rail, like a regular car, yeah. you know, like Subarus and stuff like that. Um, really anything, you know, that has the uh, rooftop rails on it you think, can mount I think those if you're going to do that kind of stuff and you need to go out and practice a little bit yeah you know yeah. because when it comes time to boogie and you got to go camp and you ain't done it and since you were in boy scouts when you were a teenager it could yeah. get a little stressful with you and the significant other and the kids when everybody wants to eat and everybody's trying to figure out how to start to fire and everybody's cold and they're like ah 
<laughs> yeah, I totally agree with you. You know, get out there and do it. Like maybe start in your backyard or find uh, little yeah, day yeah. trips you could do or weekend trips that you can do. Even Lola, you know, I'm not a big fan of tenting, but Lola and I did it. I think when we went to NRA, we took the rooftop tent. Right, right. And uh, we were like, we we spent a night in that thing. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I mean, and, and you should do it because like Walter's saying, you want to know how it even works. I think I like when I put it back on, I think I put it the wrong way, but I still got yeah. it to work. And you just want to figure all of that stuff out. What I did was I figured it out afterwards and then marked everything. So I know because you take it off and put it back on. So right. I marked everything so I would know, OK, next time I have to do this, this is the left side of the car, right side. Even that, that day was up there. You're trying to figure out how to mount it on top of your thing and it wasn't working. It was like. Yeah, all of that is going to be in the video. <laughs> when the video, when the when I finish editing it, it's just we have a lot of footage from that. But that's one thing that you could do because look, worst case scenario, there's places outdoors that you can go to, that you can be on your own in your outdoors, or there might be like you can have you can have some fun actually instead of being all stressed out in a shelter with some guy that's dirty and gross and looking at your wife. Could be, in any ways, you know, that kind yeah, of thing. So. Right. But also you might have friends and family members who have, they might have a small house that can't really fit you, but makes things uncomfortable, but they have a property that you can go to and you can camp out on their property. You're better outside because after a couple of days with the, with the relatives that you don't live with, you end up hating yeah. it. You remember why you don't live with their crazy asses <laughs> very quickly. So uh, what is this? Ken Helmer says uh, solar powered well pump is better. Um, you know what? If anyone out there knows about a good solar powered well situation that you can do, let me know. I'll look that up. Maybe I'll do a video on it or something like that. We'll get one. Do you do you get into solar power at all? Solar power is very cool. I mean, it has its. Um, yeah. But for a well pump, I know well pumps use a lot of electricity. Well, you have to have batteries and all that stuff. Yeah, too. yeah. You got to have probably build some kind of like a like a battery shed or something that you can store the energy. You got to have some deep cell or deep discharge batteries and stuff. Yeah. And yeah I mean, right. it, it, you got to just plan for it. You know, you got to do it all the time. You can't do it just for when the storm hits. Yeah. Know? I was talking to Chris Weatherman about this today, actually, by the way. I have some video of me talking to Chris Weatherman. That's Angry American, Angry American. But So at some point I'll put out that video. But we'll try to get him to come on and do more stuff with him. Um, and there's a, there's a whole bunch of stuff related another, to that. Another, I, I used to, for everybody, I used to work for the gas company here in Clearwater. And the gas company will not turn the gas off, the natural gas pipeline, because if they do, it fills with water and mud. So they'd rather have it just blow and, and be leaking. So if you have natural gas, like I have a natural gas grill in the backyard, or you have a natural gas generator that runs up, mm -hmm. you're going to have all the conveniences of a home almost. Um, through, unless, unless it's like complete, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> bad stuff but even during katrina that you could saw different different things when it flooded was bu gas bubbling up and everything they, don't, they really don't, can't turn it off or it'll fill with water so right mike mike bryant and you can check out some of these things walter i think mike bryant says solar cell phone charger yeah. um shut up in place says crank radio for news which that's a good idea we should always have those um you know radios with a ham license that's a good thing i think uh, do you have a ham license have you ever had one of those and we yeah. were talking to Tyvin about that and you know they they've they've laxed they've got a lot laxer on that stuff it used to be back in the old days you know they went around looking for people that were broadcasting illegally but it's not so much that anymore yeah so. we've got to research that and see where that goes and maybe do some follow-up stuff because you know what we, the, the the worst time to think about all of this is when you need it yeah, yeah. so we we probably need to be more prepared jackson yeah. Ullman says work on your hunting skills yeah, yeah, yeah. gets in that 22 long rifle for the shooting them squirrels you know what I'm yeah <laughs> yeah um uh, phil smith says uh vhf radio yep, yep. right um uh wardex says how are you going to move your R rv without fuel well what i would say is if you know pedals um, like third foot <laughs> <laughs> if you know something is coming well first of all there's a couple different things with an rv if you know something's coming ahead of time you get the hell out of there right. your rv if you have the tank full you can you can probably go some distance away at least far enough away from what's happening right you know um that's the idea get to the high ground anyways you know? yeah if you're like me and you don't like calling on family members or friends to show up at their place there's lots of campsites around the country that you can just 
you know. You know, when it when it gets all nasty like that, you can throw over inside the road someplace or yeah. And if and and RVs have um at least the one that we have, they have where you can put on there extra fuel tanks. Yeah, like you actually can, built in. You, you can have your solar system cells up top. You know, you yeah. can have the whole thing. I mean, an RV is like a great emergency thing, and that was what that's my reason why I got into it. Because even if you don't have to leave your home, but you lose power in the home and you don't have generators, you could just move the family into the RV, run that, or run the generators connected to that, it's and possible. have air conditioning or watch TV. <laughs> right, right. You never know. You yeah. might get a limb through your roof or something, and you know, or or something weird happen like that. So, yeah. There's, you know, I'm not telling, I'm not saying everyone should do that. That's just something for me. I thought, oh, well, you know, I could do it. And, and I've got the space and I just like the idea of projects like that. But, you know, <laughs> the, the thing for me is I don't have like Walter skills with building stuff. So that means I've got to go to someone and have them work on it and then figure out how to make the money to pay for it and all that kind of stuff. Uh, Lola, who is a pharmacist, Lola, our Lola says your meds don't call the pharmacy at the last minute <laughs> yeah. yeah you know that's that's true. And, and she put like you know um punctuation no not punctuate exclamation marks yeah, you're gonna be at somebody okay. else's bay then if you've got to wait on them to get your drugs and and you know, and they're not, they're in no hurry to get you your stuff when they got to get their own family stuff so yeah all, but always have more meds than you need because there's a lot of stuff that can happen with your meds you might something might happen to you personally like you lose your job or something like that and then you're not able to afford the meds i know some of them don't last yeah and if you need so, to refrigerate those meds you got to you got to have to figure out how you're going to keep your meds cool yeah. too they don't go bad so yeah, and and that's what like ice chests and um, all those kinds of things. I'm just getting into because of you. I'm getting into the uh, the Yeti, those Yeti bags. We actually, what do we get? Like a, a Yeti thirty, a hopper. Oh, you got the hopper, yeah. I got a yeah. hopper. Yeah, you we know? got the hopper. I think yeah. we got like the thirty or something like that. They um, you know, there's a lot of other ones that are similar, and there's some that are cheaper, but um, and there you know, there's always back and forth with this stuff, but. My hop, my Yeti Hopper, which is a first gen one, it works. It does what it says it's going to do. It's it's been to England. It's been military vehicle stuff. It's been all over the place. And it and it and yeah. the nice thing about the Hopper is it's soft. So like, see, we're going to England. I carried it on like carry on baggage, empty with just a couple things in it. And we got to England. It was it was the ice machine. You know how there's no ice in England. You got to it's like it's like it's like gold. And yeah. uh, and I was, you know, and I came back and it was carry on again and it was done. Yeah. Um, so some gun says a portable cooler plug into the, that you can plug into the, uh, solar the car lighter or something like that. Uh, Lawrence Lerwick says I need to take some classes, a class or two on mechanics and construction. Yeah, that's true. I am trying to learn about all that stuff. I took a welding class. Yeah. A long time ago. I try to do all these things. It's just, I don't know, you know, maybe doing YouTube videos all the time, but it does yeah. burn a lot of time. But I do I do need to do it. And I'm always down to learn and hang out with people when they're doing stuff. Yeah, the best and you know what? There's lots of videos on pretty much everything that you need to do. The, be the best way to learn stuff is just to jump into it and do it, you know. And, you know. Yeah. I mean, it's like... Um, Learning how to work with metal, learn how to work with wood. The only way you're really going to learn how to work with it is do it. Yeah, hanging some nails into some wood and figuring out how to do it. You know, you either figure out you're halfway decent at it, or you really suck bad, and you need to let, you need to hire somebody. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, um, absolutely. Trust me, that's why I live out where I live now because I do all that stuff. I buy tools and all that. It's just yeah. like Walter's saying. When I start building stuff, it gets a little disastrous. <laughs> I didn't say but it's all the no. It's the it's the learning. The Lola says it all the time. Okay. Yeah. She's I mean, like, I, whenever, I, I, I'm more creative that I'm actually able to do things. So I just start getting my projects get crazy and complicated. Well, you have a you have a tendency to go raptor on everything. So yeah, yeah. I overdo things a little bit. A little yeah, bit. You don't have you don't have a regular RV. You have a four by four RV with big tires. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's just me, man. That's how I got to do it. But I think that everyone, you know, people, people out there don't, don't be crazy like me. Yeah, you know, but there are, there are a bunch of things that you can do. And thankfully on YouTube, you can learn a lot of stuff. So yeah, it, it definitely, yeah, definitely. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. For, without yeah. a doubt. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's not like before, but there was a time when, you know, the only way you figure out how to fix your chainsaws, you had to get a book in order to yeah. get the book. You had to go, you had to go to the library. Yeah. 
But like yeah. you said, you can, you know, you can just go old school, apprentice with someone. If you have a friend that's working on a project, like volunteer to go help him out. I do that sometimes. You know, yeah. someone's working on something and I'm like, you know, even if I'm just there keeping him company and talking to him, I'm learning what he's doing, handing him a wrench or something. He's like, okay, then do this thing. And then you start to get into it and you start to learn how to right. do yeah. all these things for yourself. One of the things I do a lot of that with is like guns, you know, I, um, you know, I, I try to do as much as I can with you know, my own Lola, guns. Lola, Lola says, I love my Coleman propane stove. You know, mm -hmm. you, you should you should play with the old school propane, uh, the white gas Coleman stoves. Learn okay. how to use those too, which I have one, by the way. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. You know, yeah. That's when you pump them up in the little tank and you turn it on and, shh, you know. Yeah. And you know what? One of the things that we're that we're missing here. Sometimes you should just do drills. And um, there's lots of people. Matter of fact, I'm going to start bringing on more people like um, Angry American, Chris Chris Weatherman, and other guys that I know. That, that do all the training and the drills of what to do in these kinds of situations. But you can you can just do drills by like going and camping out at a friend's house. Well, yeah, I mean, you can just go yeah. camping for fun and- Yeah, uh, or go to any campsite. There's plenty of campsites that some that you don't have to pay for, some that you do have to pay for, park, but it's not expensive. State parks, county parks, yeah, you can just go out and, and just see how you do. You know, you'll find out your weak spots, your weak points real quick when you go camping. And yeah. You <laughs> yeah, and then have like one of the things I noticed. So, for example, with this hurricane that came, people were just not ready to do anything. So they wound up being in place, and then they had to walk out of that place. Well, what, let me let me give you people a little advice. The mayor of Houston said, "Don't leave." Now, that fool should be taken out and and hung. Um, and the, <laughs> go ahead, Walter. I'm pretty sure now. Don't listen. Don't listen to um, don't listen to the politicians when they say, "Oh, you don't have to go anywhere." He was worried that it would be a mass jam of traffic with people trying to leave. Well, duh. So then yeah. instead of the people leaving, they stay there and they and they drown and they have to be rescued. That's what are you doing over there? Oh, me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm playing with the beer cap. Oh. Uh, <laughs> okay, but yes, you know what? You have to keep your own counsel. You gotta. You gotta. You gotta. You gotta know what what's best for you don't listen to anybody else if somebody says oh it's gonna be all right and you got a bad feeling leave but yes but keep your own keep your own counsel on these things like think about first of all when they're giving out information they're giving out general information so yeah. think about specific information to where you are also so like what you were just saying about the roads and stuff like that always know you can don't ask report. lola if you don't believe this ask lola i always drive the back roads around here well, that's because you know the back roads, but most I want to learn. I want to learn them. That's why I drive it. You know, well, I didn't grow up here, so I don't. I don't know the things, and I try to drive the back roads. And even like we're going somewhere, and I just sometimes I deliberately try to get lost just so I can find different routes. That's because, like, go ahead. That's like when I'm on vacation. You know, I look at a map and I go, "Do I want to drive down the interstate or do I want to go that way?" Yeah. Most yeah. of the time, I'll go that way. And it's either it's you know a little more off the you know beaten path and it's two lane or whatever, but you know it, it's it's not the path everybody's taken. So exactly. So when they when everyone's trying to get out of town, you want to go you know, that way. <laughs> yeah, but you don't want to you don't want to wait till the last minute. A lot of people late to the last minute and then they get stuck in the traffic and they don't even have anything to eat or drink when they're stuck in traffic. Yeah, um, you know it, it turns into a big cluster. You know what? So. Yeah. So Phil Smith, um, Phil Smith says, to be fair, you can't evacuate 6.5 million people in 48 hours. That's absolutely true. Um, and I think one, there's a whole bunch of things. One of the things I wanted to talk about, people don't want to leave their stuff. Well, so, I, I, I can agree. I can, I can, I can see that. You know, I, I agree with that. But that storm was, they weren't thinking it was going to rain five feet either. Yeah. So, usually the hurricane hits, it moves inland, and it's gone. You know? Yeah. You don't get so, five feet of rain. So it flooded in places that never flooded before. So, yeah. So, okay. But if you don't want to leave your stuff, here's the thing. You know, you have to think about you what kind of. You better put a tent on top of the roof. Like I saw some people had a tent on top of the roof of their house. It's well, gonna, yeah. Well, th listen, think about what kind of insurance and stuff like that you have. This is the whole thing about insurance. I know people don't always want to pay for it. Even here in Florida, I know there's lots of people because they own their home, they don't pay for insurance. I, I can tell you, I, I know somebody that's going to pay off his place and you know him too. He lives up by you. Mm -hmm. He's called my dad. And the first thing he said was, I'm going to cancel my flood insurance. 
Well, that's bullshit. I'm going to tell oh, you right now, that's bullshit. Uh, yeah. I own I own my own place, and even though I own it, I pay for, I get as much insurance as I can because you don't know what the hell is going to happen. You know where he that's lives. what insurance is for. Yeah, you, know where, you know where he lives. If the Cat 5 storm hit where he lives, there'd probably oh, be six yeah. or seven feet of water. Yeah. I mean, he's going to have to go somewhere. Uh, if he can't make it to you, he can always obviously come to my in my direction, but... I, I I know your dad. I believe you. Yeah. Can I tell you something? I don't think your dad's paying for the insurance now. Oh, he does because he had to because of the oh. mortgage. he's getting oh. ready. To pay, he's going to pay off his mortgage because he's selling some property. And the first thing out of his words, I'm canceling that blank and flood a thousand dollar a year flood insurance. I'm like, okay. You know, I'm not going to argue with him. You know, I'm not going to fight him with. You know, but, yeah, I think you should always pay. Yeah, insurance is an important thing. So. People, uh, you know, let me say th this thing about insurance. I, I get it that people don't want to pay this extra money, but there's certain insurances in life that are really important, right? Um, and uh, life insurance is really important. And then if you own a home, there's like, you know, you have to, you can deal with a fire, flood, and things like that. It's, um, you, you really need to think about these things. Lots of people don't want to pay for, for life insurance, for example. Yeah, yeah. And then, you know, you think it's not going to happen to you. It happens, man. You could be young and boom, you know, young married couple. One of those people is just gone. And now you've got to figure out how to pay for all these bills and everything. So that's the first place to start. If you have insurance and stuff like that, that's where, you, you know, you deal with that. Um, if you if you get forced to leave your stuff behind, you're going to have to leave it behind and then deal with whatever is going to happen after that. So, you know, hey, just take a bunch of pictures and things like that, you know, in a digital camera. You could take all that with you and then maybe you have some proof of what you had. Even if you don't have insurance, maybe some kind of um, disaster aid that comes down the line, they, they will help you, maybe reimburse you for some of those things. But they're just going to want proof that you actually have these things. But it's not worth it. If you die, it's not worth it because you don't have anything. When you kick the bucket, whoever's living in the world has your shit. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so one way or the other. So it's not. It's really not worth it. And I think if you know ahead of time that your specific area is in big danger or whatever, board up, lock up everything, take what you can and go. Because a lot of these people that you saw in Harvey had to walk away. They and they and when you walk away, you can't take that much with you. Nope, nope, <laughs> nope, nope. That's just the reality of this thing. So it's better to drive away when you can, lock everything up. You can drive away. Drive take, away. You, you can take a lot of your good stuff, the, the good, good stuff with yeah. it. Yeah. Grab your important things like your your, um, and your pictures and, you know, stuff like yeah. that. And Maybe jewelry and stuff like oh, that. Yeah, you you got to take the jewels. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah take, take those things. But then there's other, you know, there's only so much you could take with you. But But this is you have to leave ahead of time. And, yeah. and have some idea of how the hell you're going to do that and get out of there ahead of time. Oh, yeah. You know? yeah. Um, Sun Gun says if the, uh, if the weather, people say 80 degrees. No, if they say go, then you should go. If the, you know, if the weather people say you should go, then you should go. That's what that, yeah, that's true. And you have to just focus on that and think about your area and the maybe what you've seen in the past or what's happened in the past if you can research that. Yeah. Take what you can. It's always better to drive out with stuff than to walk out with nothing. <laughs> yeah, you don't. Even, you don't even got no clothes. You got no underwear. You got no. You got no. No driver's license. You got no you got nothing. No. If you drive out in your car, you can live in your car. If you drive far away enough okay. from where this happens, you can get gas and stuff like that and live in your car. Yeah, you got it. You got. You can bring some fresh. You know, fresh pair of underwear. You know, and yeah. socks. I will live in my car before I go to a shelter. I'm not a oh, fan. I didn't go into no damn shelter. Yeah, sorry. I'm not a fan of a shelter. Shut up and play says. Uh, they knew four days before it happened, could have issued shall leave evacuation order. Yes, they could have, yeah. It, it, well, I think the storm tricked a lot of people because it went from a tropical storm to a full-on hurricane real quick. And I don't think they were thinking it was going to happen quite like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. Even though we're saying you can predict all these things, look at what happened in Katrina. I remember Katrina because we were in Florida. It was supposed to hit um, West Palm Beach where we were. It was supposed to hit there. Remember that? And then it spun off and went out towards, like, it went into the um, Atlantic, you know, and then somewhere in the Atlantic, it regenerated and then came back. <laughs> oh, yeah, right? yeah. Unless I'm mistaken. But I remember that's what happened with that, that they really, you know, they thought, oh, this thing's gone. Then it came back and came back faster, you yeah. know, and by that time, it's a little late to do anything. And that happens. That happens to you. Yeah. That's why we were talking earlier about maybe there's things that you can do 
where if you got trapped in place, if you're worried about water, for example. Well, like there's, there's people who are stuck in their apartments. You know, if I was stuck in my apartment and I had some food, I'd stay as long as I could. You know, I mean, I, I, like once again, it, depending on what you have to cook with, if you have anything to cook with, if you have natural gas, most likely it'll still be on so you can still cook. Yeah, you but it, um, okay, so for example, right. You can but, boil water, you can, I mean, you know, that's just me though. I mean. No, I get what you're saying. But for example, when I was looking at um, when I was looking at Demo Ranch's video that he put up, they there was this lady, and I think it was just her older lady, and and she had um, I think like two cats and two dogs or something like that, and one of them was a little vicious, so they had some kind of problem. Like you know, she didn't have cages for her own dog that she yeah, knew was vicious. It, 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 but here's the thing: she was telling the authorities because he was helping, um, I think like some law enforcement guys. They were all going around. And she was like, oh, I'm just going to stay here and wait until the electricity comes on. And they were like, um, that could be weeks. 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 <laughs> hey, uh, just a, a quick here. Tyvin asked, uh, in 2017, who wears underwear? Um, that's so 1950s. Okay, Tyvin, that's TMI. We don't need to know that you go commando. <laughs> is that is that, a, is that, is that a, No, you know. If you, I, the reason I mentioned underwear, because today they said things you could donate. And it was toiletries and stuff like that. And they said specifically undergarments. Mm -hmm. Or these people yeah. go to these shelters and stuff and they don't got no britches. You know, yeah. what are you gonna we <laughs> they've got no they people got nothing, don't have you know, anything. and everything. If you wait until the last minute to leave, you don't have anything. You're not gonna yeah, you're, you're, you know you're dependent on somebody to, for everything. You know, you know, you get your hand out the whole time, you know, it's like please give me some clean underwear. Yeah. Oh, you know, right. Yeah. If you're waiting until the last minute to do something, you're not going to have anything. You're just walking out. You might not get. You might not get those big girl panties like you're talking about yeah. all the time. You know. Yeah. You, it's. it's you, might get, you might get those old school ones that you don't have been worn in thirty years. You know. It's like, you will be wearing people's used underwear, and I know that sounds terrible, like secondhand underwear. But when you're yeah. when you're in that situation, that's how it goes. You get what you get. You don't pitch a fit. So yeah. you know. You know, and underwear in a situation like this is a good thing. Okay, that helps you stay in your clothes a little bit longer. You yeah, can always change yeah. your underwear. <laughs> you can absorb bodily fluids and all that kind of stuff. Like yeah, that. yeah. <laughs> so I mean, you know, it sounds disgusting, but you. The thing about this is, I'm not trying to encourage people to be super preppers. I'm not. I'm not a super prepper. Yeah. But I think about all of this, and um, I pay attention to things that are happening. And then if if I thought something like this was happening, even now I don't have. This RV thing I'm talking about does not exist. So I think, well, what would I do right now? You know, so when I buy a vehicle or something like that, I think, okay, can I put everyone in my family plus stuff in this? And yeah. could we could we move in this thing? Could we could we um, survive? Can we if the roads weren't working right or whatever? That's why I'm into like you know four by fours and stuff like that because you're chainsaw. I'm gonna, yeah, yeah I'm gonna drive. I'm gonna drive off road if I have to, man. If you want to learn how to, you want to learn a tool. You should learn. You should learn how to start and use a gasoline chainsaw. That because makes sense. Yeah, I've you used cruising, it. You can cruising down the road with a big oak tree in front of you down the road. You're not going anywhere. Yeah. Another thing that's cool to have, and I have a friend that does this, and we do we do have these um, bicycles. Bikes are cool. Yeah, bicycles I mean. are awesome. Now, if it's flooded, I don't know what a bicycle is going to do for you. You know what I mean. Well, nothing well, else. You can take your bike with you when you bug out, and then if you need to, once you get your base camp set up, you can use your bike to go out from the from the yeah, base. If camp. you have flotation and stuff like that, if you have something that you could float, then you could throw the bicycles on it, and and you can get them out of there. Because once you get to dry land, you may have to walk around. Oh yeah. Oh, I would imagine so. Yeah. Yeah. So bicycles are cool, and you can get bicycles from all kinds of places. You can get them used, cheap. You can fix up bicycles. People donate bicycles. You should always have. You should always have bicycles with you. Oh wow! Look at you. You're so spoiled. First thing you need to do in a disaster is save Peggy. Oh, exactly. <laughs> oh, don't worry. I take care of you. Yeah. As I said before, if somebody's, I've told, I've told some like um, mothers in the Boy Scouts that we're gonna say if we were in the woods and it was cold, I'd burn down the woods to stay warm. So. You're not going to – I don't care about the trees. The trees will grow back. We're going to stay warm. Yeah. Oh, yeah, but absolutely. That's what the trees are there for. You should always have something like a machete, uh, some kind of saw or, or a thing that you can chop down trees, well, limbs. These are stuff. like tomatoes. They're all, they'll grow back. 
Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm making sure that um, that I have all those kinds of things in all the different vehicles. Some of this stuff, obviously, you don't want to like weigh down your vehicle with a bunch of crap. So I think what you should do, and I've seen a lot of the overlanding landing guys do this, because they go out overlanding and they go on trips, they don't want to make it difficult. So like if you said to me, hey, Hank, let's let's go overlanding, you know, a couple of days from now, right. one of the things that might stop you is if you're like, man, so now I have to get everything together and pack and prepare everything. But what you could do is just always have stuff ready to go. You have it in a box. You have like a, yeah. a box with your, your eating stuff, your plates and your knives and forks and spoons and your basic stuff in a couple of boxes and you can just throw it in the truck and go. Yeah, absolutely. Have some kind of system where you could very quickly just like get the hell out of there. Um, so Lola just put up here, you should have toilet paper, baby wipes, have your documents, Double social blanket. security card, birth certificate, driver's license, etc. For those of us who knows, know what those things are, some people don't have those. What? Of they don't know. Yeah, they don't know anything about their documents. Or the papers. You must have yeah. your papers when you go out. Yeah, some people don't believe, and I'm not talking like you might, you guys might think I'm talking about people who came to America illegally. No, there's Americans they don't have here papers. and they don't have their birth certificate, social security card. Yeah. I mean, they don't even know. They're like, what the hell are you talking about? You start so. talking to the insurance company and you don't have your papers or your any knowledge, they're going to go like, uh, you need to call us back. Yeah, you're going to have a very tough time proving that you own things. So, you know, that's that's some of the stuff that you can do here. Let me see. Let me make – you know what? You want to – do you think we covered this enough that folks, you know? Well, you know, like um, Chris Servin says, don't forget salt and pepper shakers. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> and some people might laugh. But you know what? When you get someplace like me and I'm eating something and you can throw a little salt on it, that's like – All the world. <laughs> you know? All the world. Chocolate. You know who says this? This is something that Chris Weatherman tells me all the time. Uh, chocolate bars. Yeah. Or, yeah. or like I said, you know, they do a joke about it. If you had a six pack of beer mm -hmm. and you can, you can, you can have a beer when things are all kind of crazy. It's like, Oh yeah. And you can, you can barter with those. I saw an article somewhere. I didn't read the whole article, but it was talking about like, you know, can, can you barter away guns? I would not do that. No, but you know what? Even if you don't smoke, mm -hmm. if, you have, if you've got a, 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 a thing of cigarettes and you get to come off a guy that smokes and he ain't had smokes in a while, Mm -hmm. You can get anything you like. Yeah. <laughs> Kyle, Kyle, Kyle says uh, tactical uh, spork, which is a good idea. I should always have those. Because, um, man, I've just been in regular day situations where I needed a fork. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Um, Jay Hike says, what's a good bug out time? 30 minutes? Uh, I think it depends. Um, well, it yeah. depends what's going on, I guess. Yeah. Now, what was that movie, Heat? I think in the movie Heat, he said... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what was it? There was a line. You, you, do you know the movie Heat, where they were bank robbers? Yeah, I haven't. I don't know. I don't yeah, know. It, it, this is a good gun movie, Walter. You have to watch the movie Heat. Okay. It has like Robert De Niro. Um, it's got all the big guys in there. Um, uh, what's his name? Al. Um, hey, guess what I'm going to do Saturday night? What? I'm going to see the Big Lebowski. The Big Lebowski. You've seen that before, right? I've never seen it. Oh boy. But I'm yeah, going with all, I'm going with a bunch of guys that they live by that. So yeah, that's a good movie. It's a good movie. And I guess it's a, and at first it's going to start off with drinking. Yeah. And then um the movie. and then you go to see the movie. That's good. That will help you. <laughs> you know, it's yeah. a good movie whether you do do the drinking or not. But in Heat, I think it has Al Pacino, Robert De Niro, a whole bunch of big stars are in Heat, and it's basically a movie about these um these guys who are bank, it's about two sets of people, the bank robbers and the cops. It's like a okay. cops and robbers movie. And it's a lot like that Hollywood shootout. Remember the Hollywood shootout, yeah. the real thing that happened? Yeah. It's a lot like that, but the, um, I think Robert, who's the bad guy in there? I think it's De Niro. Wow. Um, but De Niro said, there was something he was saying about um, not falling in love with anything that you can't leave. And I don't know if it was 30 minutes or five minutes or something like that. So I've kind of lost faith in Robert De Niro. He's turned into a, a hardcore anti-Trump. Okay. You know, I, so, you know, whatever. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's true. I know a lot of people saying that, but it's still a good movie. It's a good movie to I'll uh, check it out. I'll check it's it. a good, you know, it's a good gun movie. If you want to watch a gun movie. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, yeah. De Niro, Val Kilmer, who's batshit crazy. <laughs> 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 um, I like Val Kilmer. He was Batman too, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like old Batman stuff, not that new stuff. It's too dark now. 
Yeah, Phil Smith says create a document with all your stuff, with model, serial number, etc., your gun, TV, computers, etc. Anything that could be lost during a tragedy event or stolen will help you later. Yeah, you can even nowadays, share that with people. Now, I mean, nowadays you can get like a two terabyte, two, excuse me, two terabyte memory stick thing. You can put all your stuff aside from hard copies. You can put it all on a on a two terabyte. Put, yeah, Phil says you can put it on the cloud. You know, we could we could be I could be taking pictures of all have pictures of all my guns with the serial numbers. You know. Yeah, just make sure the CIA or whoever the government doesn't get that so they create a database on you but whatevs it doesn't it doesn't matter to me they yeah. already they already know believe it there's so many lists and databases on our asses it's not even funny i'm on so, i'm on the list already i, I say that all yeah. the time people look at me funny it's yeah. like oh okay. no no but what i'm saying everyone's on that list trust me they're they're tracking stuff i mean i used to have um, a top, i used to have a top secret security clearance so i think they know who i am yeah yeah but, you know, I mean, I know there's guys who are really off the grid and they buy everything cash and all of that. Oh, and I understand that. I don't, I yeah, don't have a problem with that. Um, yeah. Um, I understand why they do it, but that don't mean they're not on the list. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Dozer Destroyer says, Mythbusters made a bike that can ride on water and the road. We all just need that. Yeah, I don't remember that episode, but we could probably, probably, probably find a back episode to that. So, you know what? I'm going to remind folks to uh, share... Don't forget to click the like button and share this on social media while we're talking about all this good stuff. Um, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. That's good stuff. Yeah, just um, yeah. The thing about um, so Ken Helmer says all these save it ideas. Does anyone want to bet how many people do it? I know it's it's tough for people to do it, and you can put it in the cloud. But look, you could even make a video even at the last minute. Yeah. I think if if you do it, around your camera yeah. and make a video. Yeah, I'm a last minute guy. I'm not no, trying to say like I don't. I'm not trying to say that I do. I don't this. have that two terabyte thing. I'll tell you right now, I don't. But oh well, I got all kinds of hard drives. Hard drives are cheap right, now. We bought it with video of me on it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Hard drives are cheap now. But the thing is, you could do this at the last minute with your phone. You can walk through your house real quick and yep. just document what's in your home real quick on video. Your stuff. Yeah, yeah. you can do. It's going to take you some time. You know, but if you're really, if you're like, listen, we've got to abandon the house and we don't know what state we're going to come back to, if people are going to loot, loot the home. And yeah. don't necessarily stay in your home because you're worried about your material possessions. Because if you're out there on your own and people really decide for some reason they want to come after that house and get what's in there, it's not worth your life to try to defend your material stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, if you live, if you survive, you can always get material things back. But if you don't survive, especially when you have people with you that you care about, that you're also putting at risk. So yeah. if you've got a family, don't put your family at risk, man. That's always number one. Yeah. 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 That's something I try to tell people. You know, charity begins at home. You want to yeah. save someone, save yourself, save your family members first. Make sure your, yeah. your people are all right first and then take care of everybody else. Yeah, that's one of my pet peeves. Some of these people are so into helping everybody, and they are then when then they don't have anything even of their own. They don't take care of themselves. So yeah, I don't know. You know, so just you know, that's the thing. I I think yeah, there's a lot of this we're not going to do, but do it. But at the last minute, you can create something, even if it's on your phone or okay. something like that. In the last minute, you can document this thing. You can you can send it up to the cloud. You know, so even if your phone dies or you lose your phone or whatever, it's on the cloud. You can always retrieve it in the future. But ultimately, what does what do the material things matter if you're not here? You need to survive whatever's going to happen. Somebody, oh. somebody else is just going to. Go ahead. Stuff. Like I always yeah. tell people, some of these old people, they die with all this money sitting in a bank, and they live in like paupers. All, uh, all your yeah. all your family's going to do is go out and buy a big screen TV with that money when you die. They, yeah. Yeah, man. Use it while you're alive. Enjoy it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. The worst thing is if you don't make it, but your 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 chick does. Just realize somebody else gonna be hitting that. Well, so I, that hope, be, I, know, I, I hope. hope they, I hope they enjoys this stuff. <laughs> that should be your motivation to survive. I never, I never okay. say that. You know, like somebody said, "Oh, if I die, I can't. I can't. Uh, I won't be able to do this without you." It's like you're stupid. No. Yeah, I'm know. pretty sure Lola will forget about me in about five minutes. What would hurt me even worse is uh, if, if I was all of a sudden gone and and my guns ended up in the scrap pile. That oh, would, 
I, I would be a mad ghost. Oh, if Lola, if Lola, I'm fine if she sells my guns when I'm gone. I'm okay with that. You know, I always tell her you need to sell guns or whatever. That's hey, you know, just make sure you keep like you know the the bare necessities around. You don't have to sell down the the whole entire collection. But if my guns wind up getting melted or otherwise destroyed, well, I am haunting people. I'm gonna be a mad spirit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna haunt the shit out of you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna mess up lots of booty calls. <laughs> I'm gonna shake those <laughs> the walls and the floors and. <laughs> It'd yeah. be like horror movies. You know? awesome. <laughs> I always said I always make fun of the horror movies. You know, they make them. They're always white people in the horror movies, right? Uh huh. You know why? Because white people don't leave. Black people get out of they get out of the house when that shit starts to happen. Well, oh, people, like uh, scary shit. <laughs> you mean ghost hauntings. <laughs> they want. They want. They want experience. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So part of the reason is is that there's always uh, there's always. I guess, you know, I know these are stories and stuff like that, but there's always those white people who don't believe in ghosts. <laughs> but one thing I could say with authority, I, if walk, even if, if you're walk, an atheist, even if you're an atheist black dude, you don't need to see too many signs to believe in ghosts. If the walls start bleeding or something, the snakes start coming out of the, the toilet and stuff, I'm out of there. Sorry. Yeah. Um. So, okay, someone hit us with this. Uh, he That's Eddie Murphy. That's yeah. Eddie Murphy. Yeah, I'm sorry. What Eddie Murphy routine? Why white people? Why people stay in in the house? He's yeah, because um, he was talking about stuff that happened back in Long Island in in uh, the New York area. Yeah, There's yeah. a I forgot the home. That, Amityville uh, Horror. Yeah, Amityville. I've been. I've seen that house. Yeah. Yeah. You know, of like, because I I live close to Long Island. So, and Eddie Murphy, I think, grew up in Long Island, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. I think he grew up in that area. Mm -hmm. Uh, someone says uh, heat with Al Pacino. If you can't walk away in thirty seconds or less, that's the thing. So you, you you've got to think about that. And obviously, it's going to take longer if you haven't uh, okay. done things. But you always have some level of time. If you don't have any time at all, get in your vehicle and get the hell out. Right, right, right. You know. But if you've got to abandon your vehicle, abandon your vehicle. Oh yeah, I mean, if it gets that bad, yeah. Yeah, abandon it. Um, but yes, everyone's mad at, at Robert De Niro because he's anti-gun, and I mean, I'm with you. I don't yeah. like any anti-gun anybody's. No, it's not. It's not so much the anti-gun stuff. He's anti, like rabid anti-Trump. You know, yeah, he's a social justice warrior. Yeah, I don't need it. I don't need it. Um, yeah, you know. I know. Unfortunately, listen, we have to figure out as like a gun community to figure out how to create our own entertainment. Until then, <laughs> we got to just deal with some of this. A lot of these people are actors. They might look badass, but they're just actors, man. Mm -hmm. You know what? You don't have to. You know, Christopher Walken is not a tough guy. Do you know that? You know, Christopher Walken, who always looks scary in movies. Well, he's he's and that's Angela Jolie's daddy. No, Christopher Walken. No, yeah, Angelina Jolie's daddy is another dude. No, he's a big-headed dude. No, I'm just telling you, uh, Angelina Jolie's dad is um, and I think if I'm not mistaken, that guy's a Republican. He's yeah, conservative. yeah, conservative. Yeah, I'm talking about Christopher Walken. That's the scary guy who. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I know. I'm, I'm he's got a big head, and yeah. um, yeah, he's he's a normal dude. Um, yeah, but that guy, he always plays like a scary, yeah. you know, like a badass in movies. That guy's anti-gun. And yeah. what you have to remember, he's an actor. You know what he did before he was acting? He was a dancer. <laughs> so, you know, like these are actors. They just, they play roles. They're not really badass. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. You know, so don't. You know, you just have to realize, like, I'm not trying to knock actors not, or John, anything. John Voight is um, Angela Jolie. Yeah, there you go. John Voight, yeah. yeah John Voight, yeah. Yeah, and he's yeah. cool. Yeah. yeah, he's all right. So, you know, um, Lola says board games. So in, in all these things, board games, yeah, that's good. Yeah. You know, when you don't have anything, salt and sugar. Um, Ken Helmer says, what guns to take? 22, 12 gauge, 410. Nice little pistol. SHTF 50. <laughs> Something you can conceal. That's what you want to take. Yeah, you want to take stuff that um, lightweight. So if you have to take things with you, you want to take stuff that you can take a lot of ammo and all that if you have to. But if you got to walk into a situation, you don't want to have this forty-four Magnum bulging out of your 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 waist because you can't hide it. Yeah, you know? take what you know is ready and what you always use. So for example, if you always carry a Glock or whatever whatever handgun, 
you should definitely take that with you. You're just going to need yeah. to take extra ammo. Right. Um, extra mag. Uh, yeah, a shotgun, that's pretty simple and easy to use. You don't even have to really have um, optics and all that. Because a lot of us have guns and the optics aren't really set up or whatever. What <laughs> you know, happens when you, the gun, the what guns are projects. What happens on your pretty little optic when the battery dies? Yeah, absolutely. Your, your iron SOL. sights. Your SOL. You better learn how to use iron sights. Keep it simple. Well, yeah, I believe. Yeah, I've seen some of these guns with these big old optics of pistols. What if you drop it by accident? Oh, you dropped it, and you tear that thing right off the right off the slide, or it's hanging off by one screw. What are you gonna do then? Yeah, but your big fancy dancy uh, competition gun needs to stay in the yeah, safe you when you're away. Get yourself, yeah. a, get yourself a simple revolver. Get yourself a simple automatic that doesn't have 15 safeties on it and all kinds of lights and lasers and all kinds of bullshit. Mm -hmm. And, and also take what you can conceal the best, you know, because um, you don't want to get into situations. And a very, where one, common, a very common ammo, nine millimeter, twenty-two. You know, yeah. put away that forty-one. Yeah, two, two, three, and stuff like that. There's an article in. Um, let me see. There's an article in one of the blogs today where someone's talking about this. Um, there's one of these training dudes. Let me see. I'm going to try to find this here while we're talking while we're on the subject of it. You no, know, that's that's my my the kiss principle. If you got a bug out, keep it simple. You know, don't. You know, I, unfortunately, people have lots of animals, and mm -hmm. I, I don't. And the reason I don't have animals is because, to me, animals are an anchor. Okay. Yeah. Okay. If I, I decide, found the article. Mm -hmm. If I decide I'm going to leave and go to England for a month, I have to make arrangements. It's bad enough if you got kids, you got to make arrangements, but then you have to make arrangements for the other the other kids, and it gets expensive and it gets complicated. So I don't. Yeah. Now, lots of people have animals and they fall in love with their animals. I think you do have to, if you're going to have anything that you care about and you love, you better have a plan of how you're going to take care of that thing that you love. If it's your children, you yeah, better yeah. have a plan of how you're going to take care of your children. If it's yeah. your dogs, I'm not against that. People love their dogs more than they love other people. I, I have friends like that. <laughs> that gets a little, anyways, um, we won't go into that. Yeah, but, um, you know, if anything that you love, you better have a plan of how you're going to take right. care of that. It's not, the, it's not the person picking you up in the boat's responsibility to take care of your animals. No, it's not. No. no. And, and so, don't, expect, don't expect them to make arrangements for you to bring in your 10 dogs because to, well, because their, their responsibility is bring in 10 people. So yeah. if you, I know you think your dogs are people, but they're not. <laughs> yeah. And it's not, to, but, and that's why you have to think about it. If you right. love, if you love anything, you have to think of what are you going to do? Right. I right. mean, if you're taking care of a family member that's older and they can't, you know, they can't, can't uh, really do a lot of things for themselves, then you better have a plan of what you're going to do with that person in this situation. Obviously, right. you care about them. You love them. You're taking care of them probably because they took care of you and that's how you're still here. Yeah, it should be, yeah. Yeah, so you should have some plan of what you're going to do, how you're going to deal with them, how you're going to get them out of there. And a lot of times, and that's, that's, a, that's a perfect reason why you leave earlier. Well, yeah. So if even you, if you don't know right now what's the path of something or what's going to happen here, in that situation, if you if you know that hey something may happen here, start right. thinking about going somewhere else. Yeah, you and you and your critters load up and make arrangements. You know, I mean, and and take care of things instead of leaving them, which is even worse because then they end up in a shelter. Yeah. Or maybe, and, or and, and a lot of times with people's animals, especially with dogs, they don't know how to survive without you. Or even cats, if they've been uh, declawed and stuff like that, they cannot survive without you. I don't know. We had a cat, that was, we had a cat that was declawed, and we put it outside because that thing was a nasty, mean son of a bitch. And he was declawed? L listen, listen, you know, let me finish. That little bastard, that bastard had come back, and he was a white cat. he come back with blood on him, and it wasn't blood of his. Okay, so he still had some kind of claws. <laughs> he had some serious teeth, that cat did, mm -hmm. and it would attack you. I mean, it was one of those things, if you're walking into a room and all of a sudden the cat jumps on your leg and, and attacks you, you know, it's like... Mm. Okay, yeah, that's a perfect cat. I actually like those kind of cats. I put it outside. Yeah, but but that's the thing. Some some You know, I personally, um, like my dog lives outside, so I know people yeah, don't yeah, like dog, that. Your dog is awesome, but... Uh, yeah, my dog's a survival dog, man. He lives outside. I feed him. I, I make sure he's got water. He's my dog. I play with him. You know, 
Yeah, but he's a dog. He he knows how to live outside. And even though we feed him, he forages and all that stuff for himself. <laughs> you know, he knows he knows how to survive. But I would take my dog with me because, in a, in, especially if you're not right. going to shelters and stuff like that, your dog could be really useful. It could help you do a lot of things. Yeah, I, you know, I, definitely I work as security. I don't, <laughs> I don't have anything against the animals itself, but it's just the, you know, you got to make arrangements or you shouldn't have them. I mean, that's one of those kind of things. So. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, but so but like that's kids. the whole thing. It's the same way with kids. It, you know, if you can't take care of them, guess but what? lots of people, yes, I know, and lots of people take have... on responsibilities they cannot deal with. Right, right, right. You know? And that's why you have to think about these things. So, for example, let's say something happened, and you didn't get warning. So your kids are at school, and something happened. Do you know well, what you're going to do in that situation? You should you you should have a discussion with your children what they should do. How to you know maybe a meeting point or, or a way to contact each other or but not not one of these things where it turns into a panic screaming I'm crying running around that's why I want to talk about adults and kids and when things go bad some of these some of these adults they run around they lose their brain so what do the kids do then they lose it yeah they if you lose, lose it brain. they lose and everybody's it. running around in a panic state even though you look and even even if I'm scared shitless <laughs> I'm not gonna run around and screaming like a ninny because it's just going to make everybody else scream like a ninny and 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 then nothing's going to get done so you know you got it it's like if somebody gets hurt bad you get cut bad or something and you go ah, everybody screams it's like shut the up scream is not going to fix it put a rag on it and 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 get it under control and stop yelling yeah you know it's like um chill <laughs> You know, and that's the biggest thing in a situation like that. You got to maintain some kind of composure. yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay, I think we have beaten this horse yeah. into a pulp. He's now glued. <laughs> let's talk about let's talk about some other things. I see that Al uh, Trevick wants to talk about um, the the Canic news. Did I send you that? Did I send you the thing going on with the Canic? The what? Oh, I saw a recall or something. Oh uh, yeah, let me pull it, that up it, and send it to you. I, I was found that interesting. They're saying extreme duty or extreme use or something like that yeah so here let me get the article i'll send it to you right now and i'll send it to the folks out there so everyone can get a look at this i'll put this in the chat so you can pull it up and i'll uh read out of it sorry about eating in front of everybody but you know um i'll put this in the chat window so folks can see it if they want to if they haven't heard of it so here we go um so this is on this article is on the truth about guns says Century Arms issues product safety notice on Canic nine millimeter pistols. Uh, importers of Turkish Canic pistols have just announced a product safety warning. It seems, in their words, repeated abusive dropping of pistols may result in damage, huh. safety features, and unintentional discharge. <laughs> Here's the announcement, huh? I'm gonna take my I'm gonna keep my tongue tied here for a second. Who took a hammer to it? Oh. Yeah, so I think that's what happened. Now, in light of everything that happened with the P320, and um, this everybody's, is, this everybody's is, being extra cautious. Well, also, this is what happens with YouTube, and I'm not knocking it. This is just how it works. If there were some YouTube videos that got really big and got a lot of views because people were testing whatever gun. So let's say with the P320, people got a lot of views testing that. It, 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 you know, it makes sense that other guys are going to go, hmm, well, let's test some other guns and see whether or not. Let's see if we can find something else. Yeah, let's see if we can get these guns to go off. And, you know, so maybe there's some of that going on. I don't know. You guys can let us know if you've seen videos of anyone testing the Canic. Or, so if that's the reason why um, this has come out, obviously something's happened if they go to the point of uh, announcing that uh, well, you need to be, be careful with it. Yeah, they're, they're probably they've probably been advised to. Um, There's something here. This is the this is kind of like the tip of the iceberg. This is the smoke to the fire. There's something going on here. I don't know what it is yet, because any gun that you abuse it, you're going to make it dangerous. Oh yeah, you can. Yeah, you if can. you beat up any gun, it's now not going to function the way it should be functioning, and you have right. to be aware of that. But maybe something is um, awry. Yeah, something's going on with Sentry. I don't know. And as, a, I, uh, and as a CYA action, they went ahead and issued this just to cover their backside. 
Right, exactly. So if anyone's uh, seen that or had any problems with it, or maybe there's just some problems going on out there that we don't know about, but maybe owners. Um, I haven't, I haven't, aside from this, I've never seen anything else. So, Yeah, I have had a mechanic in the past. I don't have one right now on the channel because, you know, we wind up having to sell stuff. Uh, Al Chovic says he owns three canics and he's pissed off. Well, um, are you having problems? You know, but yeah, Al, so have you had problems with the canics? Have you seen any of this? Let us know if you have. Um, you know, but you know, this stuff happens with guns, they're mechanical things, so. Shut up and play with your car, I agree with you, thank you. What, what did, um, oh, is this something that we should not mention? <laughs> no, he's talking about taking the guns and throwing them around. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you do that, if you abuse a gun, you oh, you constantly need to check guns and make sure that they're actually safe, like safeties and stuff like that are still right, working. Right, 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 right. I mean, this is, you know, this can happen. You could just take it apart to clean it or something like that, and you might do some damage there. So when you put it back together again, one of the things you might want to check if it has a safety is whether or not the safety works. Yeah, oh, well, yeah, definitely. I mean, it's – I always – operate the safety when I put an AR together or, or I do anything with it before I just to make yeah. sure something hasn't changed. So Al says he's mad because they want him to pay the shipping. Oh, oh okay. Yeah, well, I understand that. <laughs> 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 On three guns, yeah. So I don't understand why they're doing that. Um, you know, why they want folks to pay the shipping out to them. But, you know, um, well, because we are dealing with some budget guns, obviously here. So they maybe they don't, at this point they don't want to take a bath on it, money wise for paying for are they paying for the shipping for it to come back, or they want you to pay for shipping both ways? Um, you know, then that's definitely a loss and factors into money that you're losing on the gun. Ultimately, if you want to get it fixed, you know, if the gun's working, if it's a good gun otherwise for you, and you want to get it upgraded, then you know. This happens. I mean, I think right now Remington is dealing with something with the 700s, right? There's been there's been uh, lawsuits and stuff like that out there. So, um, you yeah, know, covering the backside. Yeah. So there's some other there's some something related to the P320 that I want to talk about. I think I put it in the chat. The oh, uh, carbine chassis. Converted. Yeah. Have you seen that? Here, I'll put it in the. Um, yeah. I'll put it in the chat with folks so you guys could check that out. This is interesting. This might make me go get a P320. So uh, this is on the firearm blog. Might be able to get a good deal on one now. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I haven't seen – people can let me know if they're seeing deals. I really haven't seen seen no. uh, people offering deals on them right now. Probably not. I haven't seen the prices come down or anything like that. So, um, so this is uh, on the firearm blog. It's the title's P320 Carbine Chassis. Um, EXO, XO1. Who's making it? Fire control unit. I think the company is XO1. So the SIG P320 line of pistols was never something that caught my attention. Let me see who wrote this first. Uh, by Pete. Pete wrote this. And it has nothing to do with the recent news, events, and reviews. My rationale is that I already have a lifetime supply of defensive pistols that all do the same thing. Right. You know. Spin well, up the Glock fanboy and whatever. However, the P320 defining its defining characteristic is the modularity. So he go he's talking about the X01. I think that's the company, and uh, or maybe it's from Fire Control Unit. Maybe that's the company. The X01, a standard model, can be chambered in nine by nineteen Parabellum, three fifty seven Sig, forty S and W, and transplanting the corresponding P320 components. So basically, it's a carbine chassis kind of thing, something like the Roni, for anyone yeah. who's just listening and you can't see this. Yeah. The difference, I think, from the Roni is that it, like, the Roni uses the Glock's pistol grip and everything, um, but this just uses the, looks like the upper, the slide, and the barrel, and then the chassis, that uh, chassis that comes from the P320 that you can remove. So you remove, it looks like you drop that, the chassis in, to their um, to their to the XO one, and then you use maybe the upper barrel stuff like that. Um, so that's how it works. It's interesting. This isn't actually out yet. It looks like uh, this is just um, they're just announcing it. Um, Jay Hike is mentoring the Mech Tech. 
Mm -hmm. hold, your, hold your horses right here for just a second. Oh, okay. Um, what did he say about the mech tech? Hmm. Yeah, uh, Shut Up and Play a Guitar said the 700s had bolt issues when you loaded it, sometimes fired. That's, yeah, that's dangerous. Yeah, this is a mech tech for a 45 ACP, mm -hmm. which is basically oh, lucky. use a lower for fire control. Oh, you got one of these. Yeah, yeah, I got one, yeah. Yeah, there's. I've had it for years, actually. So this uses what now? 45, uh, 1911 for the for, for the grip assembly and holding the magazine, and the upper is a separate, it's got its own, it's got its own bolt and the whole nine yards, so. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's heavy. This is, there's no plastic on this thing at all, so uh, it's, you know, pretty pretty stout. What's but, the stock made of? Um, actually, the stock is a wire stock, and this one has a, like an ins. Well, it's actually it's plastic. Sorry, I'm stand correct. There is some plastic. Um, okay. it's just wrapped with this nylon, nylon cover. But um, but yeah, that's uh, I've had this since the '90s actually. So yeah, it looks like one of those like shark guns. <laughs> that's what it looks like. Uh, so, it's cool though. So you've had that since the '90s, you say? Time. I'll have to bust some caps. Yeah, but, hold on. It looks like you lagged there a little bit. Say that again. I said I haven't shot it in a long time, so maybe we need to go out and do some uh, reminiscing. Yeah. Yeah, it's got a – looks like a serious muzzle device. I don't know if it's yeah, – uh, yeah, yeah, it looks cool anyways, you know. Yeah. That's part of it. You know, part of this type of thing is it's got to look – it's got to look cool or it's not – it's not cool. So. <laughs> yeah, you know, we all want that cool factor. Yeah. You know what? I like the way that this thing looks. This um, uh, what's it called? The EXO. The EXO. Oh, the EXO. Yeah, that's that's like that Roni, like you said. There. Yeah, it looks like that, but it's working in a little different way in that you don't have to drop the whole gun in there, into it. That you're just dropping part of it. Um, and so therefore, if you really wanted to, you can, you know, you yeah, you can um, you can have it all set up and and go whenever you want to. I like I like the what I like about the P three twenty and the P 250s that I had in the past is the mod modularity leads to things like this, right? Or you could do this kind of stuff down the line. So yeah, well, it's also a manufacturing thing too. It's a lot easier to manufacture assemblies yeah. than than yeah. Um, to do it all at one time. You know, it's now nothing nothing beats you know if Glock just came out with the carbine. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm just that's well, not happening in our lifetime. You know, right Apparently. now, right, right now, there's an abundance of nine millimeter carbines. So I don't know if I want to build a pistol carbine. I don't. I don't know. I don't. I don't see the. I, I don't know. Because there's too many out there. Well, I mean, okay, and it, of course they show it with a brace, correct? Yeah, this one has a brace on it. Yeah. Right. So without the brace, it's a, it's a short barreled rifle. If you put a regular stock on it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, you know, you. you you end up, you got to buy a pistol and you got to spend another. Well, yeah, but you can buy a P320 and just do the paperwork on it. That's true, but I mean. It was the, 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 uh, the gun for the P320 is that chassis, is that um, that inside thing. That Wouldn't it be easier just to buy a 9 millimeter AR? Probably, absolutely it would be, yeah. I, I'm just, I mean, it doesn't yeah, have I mean, that, it doesn't <laughs> have that cool, that cool looking uh, movie yeah. fact. Yeah, it would be easier to just build one. You know, um, right. I totally agree with you on that. Yeah, you say I like to modify stuff, but I like to keep it simple too. So, you know, if I can just go out and buy the nine millimeter carbine and get what I want without yeah. having the now, I'm pretty sure together. I saw you checking out those Ronies at Shot Show. I know we did. You know, yes, yeah. yes, yes, we did. Um, uh huh. Oh, they also had. They also I had know some it wasn't just the booth model, Sunny Yeti. Oh I'm yeah, Kalishnikov yeah. USA, top notch stuff. Yeah. Yeah, at, at Kalishnikov. <laughs> Those uh, those girls all talk with an accent too. You know? Yeah. So, um, but yeah, you know what? I think it's a I think it's a cool factor. Some people are into that. You know, we have a bunch of guns. Some people don't necessarily have a bunch of guns, though, right? So, for the guy who doesn't want to have a whole bunch of guns, but wants to have the flexibility, you know, and play around with it. Although I agree okay. with you. Um, like I had the P two fifties, and I got out of that a long time ago, and just said, hey, I'm just gonna buy the guns that I need. But I still like the idea of this. Yeah. You know, and in a situation, for example, when you have to go, when you have to move quickly, you can take, 
your your uh, you can take your handgun with you and then maybe take some parts and you have the ability for that handgun to be more flexible maybe a longer barrel you know you can do a, a few more that things does, with that it doesn't have a longer barrel with it does it that's just a regular old um yeah, let me see let me look at it i i don't think it does it looks like it's just using whatever barrel it comes with but i don't know if that gives you the ability to go with a longer barrel when you're ready I'm not sure I'm, you know and i don't know if anyone what like what length barrels people make for for the whole setup and all that because that's one of the things you might want you know if you're doing all of this and you don't really have a longer barrel i guess that's another part of the argument right um, I got to go back real just a little bit to the uh, to our hurricane survival thing. Vanessa Kitty, I agree with you. You know these people that go camping and you know like it, take a bath, wash your laundry, don't walk around smelling like a freaking old wet dog. <laughs> All right, go back to guns. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the AM7. Um, they want to know if we've seen the AM17 Kalishnikov. Have you? Uh, I think I might have saw a picture of it. Was it on the gun blog? Uh, pro I know, probably yeah, it probably was on one of these things. There's a bunch of um, yeah, that's AM7 the main stuff I read on the firearms blog, by the way. Anyways, so. yeah, um, I saw the uh, Ruger American rifle. They're going to offer it in seven six two. What do you think about that? That's cool. I like with, that with uh, mini thirty magazines. That's 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 one of your cool car uh, the calibers. And it, and uh, I don't know if you remember or not, but a few years back at the shot show. Mm -hmm. it, it when 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 uh after the assault weapons band ended build off they weren't making anything new anything different i about passed out it was in mossberg and one of them actually used made a bolt action rifle it took an ar-15 mag and i thought that was so cool because they're stepping out mm -hmm. you know they're, they're going across that line mm -hmm. high high capacity Ooh. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and now they all have what on that what do they have on the end of the barrel now? They have threads. Mm -hmm. Ooh. So, you know, it's 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 evolved. You know, they're 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 they've came out of their shell now. You know, like with the um, with the the, the fourteen inch barreled um, um, shockwave shotguns and stuff. That's a, that's a big step for a company like Mossberg or for like um, for like Remington to make those things that are on the edge. Mm -hmm. You know, where people go, ooh, is that legal? <laughs> Yeah, no, there's only legal guns. No. Yeah, when everything is selling, right, and you don't have to do any special stuff, then it's probably more profitable to just stick with whatever's already, you know, what well, you already have and well, you can produce. Yeah, if you're selling it, but I mean, yeah. you know, people get like myself, you know, when bolt action rifle is a bolt action rifle. I mean, there's not much you can do. You can you can you can dress the pig up, but it's still a bolt action rifle. So, mm -hmm. but when you add magazines, you add muzzle brakes, and you add and things and threads on the end of the barrel, then you give people options and they can have more fun with it. So, mm -hmm. you know, you break in, you break into another market like this old guy like me, as you say. And then I go, oh, that'd be cool to have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, since we went back to to the conversation, I see that there's this article here with Clint Clint Smith of Thunder Ranch, yeah. and he's talking about all the people. He says, quit bitching about two two three and don't build your your own AR. So I was kind of looking at it, and he was talking about all the people that say 223 isn't a viable cartridge and all that. They need to get <laughs> over themselves. You don't want to get shot with 223. <laughs> you know, and there's plenty of it here. I, I always, I always so get a kick out of folks that, that when you when you start talking about short barrel 223s, they go, oh, why would you do that? It loses all its this and it loses all its that. Yeah, what distance are you, you going to use it with? You know, you run the numbers on 223 out of a short barrel, and it's still cooking. It's still moving. And it's still going to cause a lot more damage than a regular pistol will, um, um, and you got a lot more rounds. So, you know, I, I don't, I don't follow that whole thing. But I, you yeah. know, and I won't tell somebody they can't do it either. So, if you don't like right. short barrel, that's fine too. So, you know. yeah, you can. Everyone can do what they want to do. Man, the comments are just like scrolling up really fast, so I can't <laughs> even yeah. see what's going on there. Um, Meredith Mayhem says pistol caliber carbine should be like eight inches at least. Uh, yeah, you want to, you, you know, you want to get a little bit of powder burn before you throw it out. Um, oh, okay. So here's a good question for you, uh, Walter. Jackson Ullman wants to. He says he saw the tail hook adapter for the MPX slash MCX earlier. I guess he saw this on your um, on your Facebook or YouTube. Where were you putting this? I did on both. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So this is. I did on Facebook and Instagram. So do yeah. you have those there? Can you show those? Can you talk about them? Yeah. I yeah. Can do. Let me That's, set this. Uh, 
Let me set this thing down so I don't drop it. Um, yeah. Let's take a look at those bad boys since someone's right, asking so about it. First things first, you know, people get the SIG collapsible stocks and, you know, and, and they come with the SIG back on them. But, you know, everybody wants to have a brace now so they don't have to pay the tax stamp, the $200 for a short barrel rifle. So what we've done basically is just made this adapter so you can remove the, the short barrel rifle stock, put the adapter on here for the tail hook. And boom, you got your brace. Yeah, Sh just show people if you can how the tail hook, because some people might not have seen the oh, tail okay. hook, how, how it opens down. I didn't know until I got one actually either how they actually work. The tail hook, the tail hook pivots down, so your arm goes through and it supports, it comes up underneath your arm. Um, so that's basically how that works. And it's, the tail hooks, this one here, or all of them are actually made out of aluminum, machined out of aluminum, so. They're not like it's at least this model is not like injection mold or plastic. I think in the future they are going to do polymer or something yeah, like that. It's just going to take a little while longer. I think the retail on the tail hook like this is one hundred nineteen dollars. So it's you know it's a little pricey, you know, but it all depends on how much you want to have a brace and not pay the tax stamp. And you know we all know what people are doing with braces. You know, for those who have a, both of our limbs, we know what they're doing. Um, <laughs> And we made this adapter. So basically on the SIG stock, you remove the, the original back, you replace the adapter, you put the brace on, and you're, and you're tail hooking. Right. Now, for those of you guys that want to have an SH, SHF uh, Kest stock, and, but you don't, once again, you don't want to do the tax stamp thing, you want to have a tail hook, we made an adapter for our stock. Same premise. I forgot to mention these all have a quick disconnect um, spot. Oh, nice. Okay, they have a QD. Okay, cool. Right. Right, right. So basically, apply the adapter. You're bracing. So you have our stock, which is a little longer than the the Sig stock, um, lighter weight, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, and um, it collapses smaller too. So once again, that's uh, that's what we came up with today. We're going to have one for the. We're working on a stock for the Evo, the CZ Scorpion Evo. Um, mm -hmm. That's in the works. And one for the AR-15 too. So these adapters, they're going to be available soon. People can. Yeah, yeah, we're going to be machining. We these came off the machine today, so these are why there's no finish on them or anything like that. So, oh, one other little thing too, on the tail hook, there's a notch. I don't know if you can see it there. Yes. That notch, we make a cord on the adapter, and you stick a pin in there when you assemble it and tighten the screws, and that way it, it can't, it can't wiggle. It'll stay at a 90 degree. Oh, okay. Position. So that's another thing we're doing too. I'm not sure. I'm, I'm not sure why on the tail hook it has it. Whether they on they have a, a mating place on some other stocks. If somebody knows, they can tell me that. Yeah, way. and then also, how does that affect your ability to shoulder or not shoulder? I'm sure someone's going to ask us. It's shoulder, <laughs> just it's shoulder or not. It could be shouldered or not shouldered because shoulders you know. just like any other shoulder brace thingy. Yeah, yeah, it works that's, fine. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, that's all out there and debatable. Do your own right. research. That's a whole other subject, and I have thoughts yeah. on that too. But yeah, whatever. Um, yeah. Do what you got to do on that one. Right, right. <laughs> I, there's a market. We'll bring on some people. And we'll have that conversation. Maybe we'll get the guys from uh, Gearhead Works that yeah, makes I mean, the uh, tail hook, and we'll. Get I heard the on. story of the whole thing, and uh, you know approval stuff and ATF and everything else. So, um, you know, we we chat. I've chatted with him. And, um, and it, you know, once again, it's, it came about, I, I talked to the guy that owns, that came out with the SB brace or the SB. Yeah. The, the original one, the SIG brace, which is a SIG brace. And mm -hmm. I had the same conversation and, you know, and, you know, and, you know, it's. Yeah. It I know the SIG brace for sure. You can do that. And then it's debatable. Everyone debates whether or not you can do the tail hook. The people who make all the other things say, "Hell yeah, you can do that." They have letters. They and have. Then, they've, they've had conversations. Yeah, and then the ATF said, if you start modifying stuff, like if you put duct tape or something on there to make it grip better or whatever, then that's considered a modification, and that's your, an SBR. In your, SIG brace, in your SIG brace, if you take the Velcro off, modification. Modification, right? Right. So yeah. This is still in its original form, so it's not been modified. It, it works the yeah, same. Yeah. Now, what happens if you put in that pin you were talking about? Is that a modification? Well, the pin, the, all the pin does is just keep it square. Yeah, but is it a modification? Well, there's a place for it. <laughs> they must have yeah. a reason for it. So. Yeah, I know. I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah. But the pin doesn't yeah. pin doesn't stop it from being a brace. Right. 
So it just keeps yeah. it straight so it doesn't turn on you when you're using it as a brace. Yeah, absolutely. I like the tail hook. I have one, um, so I'm going to need those adapters as soon as you, uh, you yeah, know. Yeah, we're going to be uh, we're going to be churning out some more. I've got material coming, and we've got some in the shop. And then these will be all hard coat anodized. Excuse me, hard coat anodized black, so they'll have a mil spec finish on them. So they'll be cool. Um, that is coming, and some other stuff is coming. So, and eventually, well, I can't say anything else, but there's other stuff coming too. So someone's out there. Who is that? Really uh, yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, I'm here. Um, so now someone's talking about the nurse. I don't know if you guys, um, you guys heard about that. There was this nurse that was arrested. Oh, I saw that. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. Uh, let me see. Let's see if we can uh, pull this up somewhere good? here. The, 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 cops, the cops wanted to draw blood off some passed out drunk guy, I guess, or a drugged up person, and she was screaming they needed a warrant, and she was. Yeah, what happened, I think, um, wherever this was, which I think it, I want to say it was Colorado, but let me, oh, Salt Lake, Salt Lake City. So they want, there was some kind of accident, and it looks like they uh, sent this cop over there to get blood from someone that was involved in the accident, I believe a tractor trailer driver, but the policy of the hospital is that guy was unconscious, so they can't, you know, their policy is not to give up his blood, The the uh, and she tried to tell the cop that, and he got tired and frustrated, I guess, and then decided to arrest her for not, for doing her job. Well, you, you know, know, and following the policy of the hospital. So that's some bullshit right there. If she wasn't going to give it, I mean, you know, she's an employee of the hospital, so she has to follow their policy. Well, otherwise the hospital gets sued. She gets fired. But, but you know. hang on a second. There's always higher levels of support. So you get your supervisor out and they can fight your battle. Yeah, but he didn't, He the, this police officer didn't let it get to all that. At this point, she was dealing with it. If he's going to arrest someone, yes, it should definitely not, should not be her. You know, I well, mean, when it, when an administrator comes in there, but what's he even arresting people for that for? Yeah, it's not like, you know, they, I don't, I don't think we know the whole story to be honest with you. So yeah, well, it's going to, you know, it's, it's going to come out. It's coming out now. I yeah. think that this is one of the problems I have with it is these guys, you know, um, the, the well, police they, state that we're living in where a lot of you know them. you don't do you don't a simple thing like this like doing your job and trying to get uh you know getting this evidence they have lots of ways of doing that yes. and they and they can wait on that you yeah. know or or uh, pursue other yeah. things for getting probably, that it was, it was probably handled wrong on both ways so because yeah. she got a little she got a little emotional too so that doesn't help anything either so. i think from what i did you see the video a little, yes, I saw some. Yeah, of that. she got emotional when they were arresting her. Okay, I know. You know, I mean, uh, I think when your butt gets arrested, you're going to get a little emotional. I, right or wrong? I wasn't there. I can't tell you. So, um, but I'm asking you: if someone just decides to arrest you <laughs> well, for no good damn reason, well, <laughs> you know, it, it, and uh, I under I understand what you're saying, but does it help yeah, any to get? If you're, if you're doing. Well, you're a human being. Human beings get emotional. If you're doing your job, if you're doing a job, if you're following the policy of your hospital, you know, and then a dude, because he's a police officer, decides like, well, I don't like what you're saying to me. Right, right. Well, I'm going to arrest. That's bullshit. Let's just, I mean, it's bullshit, Walter. I get what you're saying, but it's bullshit. It's not like, you know, he came in there and she was pushing him around and like, you know, trying to do something like that. She was just trying to explain to him that this is the policy. That she right. has to follow. There's policies that hospitals have, and right. you know, everything. Is and people have rights. As a human being, if you were knocked out, and someone was trying to get your blood, you probably would not want the hospital to give up your blood. And if they did, they're going to get sued. Someone, she may get fired. You know, you're not going to be happy of them giving up your blood without your consent, uh, without a lawyer, right? It was interesting. We'll leave it at that. Yeah. So I think it's bullshit. Well, you know, I'm not, you know, I mean, people know me, they watch what I say about a lot of these things. For the most part, I support police officers. Some of them are out of control, you know, and they think that because they have a badge, they can do whatever the hell they want to do. And if, and without, uh, without a doubt, without a doubt, you know, and they get out of hand. And when that happens, that's why we have uh, technology and all that kind of stuff. And in those situations, those people shouldn't be doing that job. Well, because police officers are citizens, they work for citizens. Well, they work that, for her. Most of them have that serve and protect thing. Yeah, they're supposed to serve and protect, but they think it goes the other way around that we're, you know, we're supposed to serve them well, and they're supposed to protect themselves. They're supposed to serve us 
and protect us. So that's the way that it works. And yes, I understand there's situations where maybe you would arrest this woman, but for her following the law and following the policy of her hospital and doing a job, there's other things he could do, you know, before he gets well, to the point like, I'm going to arrest you. He should have went to her supervisor. Yeah. But, you know, so. Once again. I think that I think things are getting a little out of hand in America. I'm not blaming it all on police officers. I'm also not going to blame it all on the citizens. There's a lot of bullshit going on. Yeah, you know, and there's a lot of things that are happening. Like one of the things, and, and we haven't talked about this, you know, Trump, um, you know, something that Obama put into effect where, um, you know, he put limitations. Yeah, he put limitations on what kind of, uh, you know, military stuff police departments could have, right? Imagine that. Huh? Imagine that. Yeah, so Obama put that into place and Trump took that out of place. I, I, I'm not for the militarization of the police. But I'm also not for being, I guess we'll say anti-police, which Trump was, I mean, excuse me, Obama was anti-police. I get so, it. But it doesn't matter what was his reason why he did it. I think he did something that was valid. And we, you know, we got to look past like everything that Obama does is awesome and uh, or horrible. We like on our side, we might go, everything Obama does is horrible. That's bullshit. And then we also can't go everything that Trump oh, does. I'm not saying everything Trump's amazing because <laughs> it's not. It's no, bullshit. Equipment, equipment. I mean, a police department doesn't need an Abrams tank, okay? Um, but they can use certain things that the military have. Absolutely, I agree I with that. Bad. But that's why there was that's why there was limitations. <laughs> but, but so, but okay. so. What what happens if we wind up in a situation where a police department goes to a hospital and wants uh, a whole bunch of people's blood out of there, and then they just start you like let's bring in the tanks. That's that's a what if thing. I don't do what if. Yeah, but here's the thing. I think it's bullshit that um, that Trump rolled that back. That's just my thing. I'm not going to agree with everything on Trump. I don't give a damn about that. I'm not dogmatic to anyone. No, I, I, I once again I'll, I'll say this: saying Obama was not pro police, so. He never, he never came out pro police ever, ever. He never supported. Um, I, I, I get that. I understand that. Yeah, um, it, it's just not, and that, that's all part of the mantra of the other side is right, <laughs> and the police are always wrong. And I'm sure, not, I'm sure he was pro police when they were protecting him for whatever that, reason. That's, but, that's, that's not the regular yeah. public. But I'm not being anti police by saying this either. I'm not being well, anti-police by saying it either. Every, I mean, every situation should be taken in, in a different. You know, si depending on, does the police department need an MRAP? I I don't know. Do they yeah, need an I, MRAP? I think there should be some limitations, and if um and, and those limitations exist as kind of like a gate, and then someone could go, okay, these guys need it because they have <laughs> particular situations. The and, okay, so those guys get a special thing to get it, or you know, but. Yeah, there has to be a limitation to what they need, you know. Now, should I have limitations on what I need? Hell no. Should they have some limitations? Hell yes, they work for me. I pay taxes, therefore well, 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 I employ well, well, them. Well, well, just stop for a second here. So you'd rather see that MRAP cut up into pieces and sold for scrap? No, but right, I could well, buy it. That That's kind of my thing too. They won't. No, I don't want to see that. Why would I want to see that? They won't know. sell it to me because it's armor they're scared of their shadow like i'm gonna do something and they're, and they're afraid of you having armor why would that be well, i don't you know, I, you know what i can go to england and buy a chieftain main battle tank and have it imported i can get all the armor i want yeah so, but they don't want to make it easy for you they want you to have to go to england <laughs> and then put it on a ship they'd rather ship its ass over here and put it, it together they'd rather cut the brand new mrap up for scrap instead of having it used for something Let's be let's be honest. Most of the time, the police department does things never roll because nine times out of ten, they're not running right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, it looks like Kofi Bates lost power. I hope uh, you know. I understand that man. Kofi Bates says he's got to go because he lost power. Oh dear. Yeah, yeah, I understand that. You know, hopefully you get all that worked out, man. Yeah. So. But anyways, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm just um, I, I'm not for all the militarization of the police. They don't need to be running around and. Uh, stuff like that but there are is there are pieces of equipment they can use all right so i i understand that i agree with you on and, that and, and it should be on, it should be done on, a, on a by a basis i don't know how to say a situation by situation basis i mean your little dinky five-man police department really doesn't need a, a mrap 
Yeah. Now, if there is some police department because of geographical location or something that's now, going on. If, if I was having protests every day in my town and I was a popo, I'd have a water cannon and we cleaned up the protests in about five seconds. But <laughs> um, peaceful. Ever seen the video of water yeah, cannon? If you're, if you're having protests that get out of hand and are not peaceful, yeah, I understand I'm not talking that. about just. But people have the right to, to peacefully protest. Yeah, they do. Yes, they do. But I'm just trying to make the distinction for someone who's going to get in no, there. No, no, no. I'm not now Walter about, doesn't want protests. I'm talking about the guys in the black hoods and right. all. I understand that. Yeah, Antifa. And then they attack the guys that don't have black. We, yeah, you know, the guys, hey, the guys on both sides, right? And that in that instance, you just clean the street. Yeah, people who don't believe in nonviolent protesting, I get There's it. There's no such you thing. Know. There are There is nonviolent protest now. But nine times out of ten, the other side shows up and to make it violent. So, yeah. you know, what are you going to do? Treat everybody equally in that sense, you know? Yeah, and just bear in mind, one day there might be a reason why we have to have violent protests. Um, I don't think we should point, step lightly point, into we're that. Not, we're not at that point right now. It's, Absolutely not. No. You know, um, at, that point, at that point you won't have the internet on. They'd already turned it off. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> Trust me. At that point, it'll all be shut down. There, sh there won't be no Google at that point. <laughs> Google, yeah. will be, Google will be, the building will be burned. So um, yeah. So, you know, I'm just, uh, yeah, everything, I, I think that we should have some limitations, some kind of gatekeeping going on with what police departments um, have access to. I really, I do believe that. I'm not saying that they don't need it. I think there are reasons, some police departments that may need Humvees, like, you know, um, yeah, well, my, my, my police department has a Humvee and they may have reasons not. why they need it. Humvees are nothing that's, you know, you shouldn't be scared of a Humvee. It's just got No, I'm not. Yeah, I'm not afraid of that. And 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 I spoke to them about it. I spoke to my sheriff about it. Um, There's more civilians with Humvees now than police departments. So. Yeah, absolutely. But, you know, we're out in the woods and stuff like that. There's places and things, things that they may have to do where they need that stuff. And I get it. I understand it. And if we, as the people, like, let's say in, in where I live, we decide we want them to have it and we fund it and all that or we get out there and put the money together, then we made that decision to do it versus some police departments that just have a whole bunch of money buy these things. And then when the population realizes that a lot of our problems comes from the politicians who we put in charge of these police departments, when we say we don't want these guys there anymore, or we want to do something about that, those guys might decide to use those things against us. So we got to think about that. But, you know, as Lola is reminding me, we got to wrap this up. Guns. I drug all these damn guns out. About you want to show? Okay, you got two minutes to show some guns. I'm not getting any more guns out next time. Just talk guns first. Yeah, okay. Hey, you, you know, you can show the guns. Go ahead. Show what is that you have? I'll, I'll give you one. What is it? I'll give you one. I'll give you one. <laughs> one round. Run quick. Uh, from where I'm sitting, I'm bulletproof to you. This, Go ahead. this is a Steyr uh, M95 straight pull. Um, cool. World War II, this is actually a World War II gun bring back. A friend of mine's father was in World War I. He brought it back. So um, One or two? World War I. One. Okay, cool. And these were also used in World War II, but mainly like the Germans used them for, they gave them to the, the police and, you know, civil, civil organizations for, um, you know, policing up the, like the Gestapo, that kind of stuff. So, um, mm -hmm. but anyways, it's a straight pull rifle, so it's kind of a pretty fast action. Um, it uses you, you, a lot of times you see this ammo on on um, different websites. It's it's a, in a in a in a stripper clip, and it'll have all kinds of like the Nazi eagle on it and stuff, and and people collect it and buy it, and they go, "Ooh, it's got the eagle on it." But I shoot the stuff because it works in the gun. So, okay, very, very yeah, cool. It's, it's a cool old gun, little carbon type gun. Yeah. I uh, like it. Yeah, yeah, they're fun. We'll shoot it. I got some ammo. Yeah, absolutely. Waiting to go. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you know what? I'm gonna announce this. You're gonna you're gonna get next week off for the most part. Because I'm not gonna be here. I'm gonna be doing training next week. So I might come back at the end of the week, maybe Thursday or Friday, but definitely Monday to Wednesday, I'm definitely not gonna be here. So <laughs> somebody what? say, what did I use in the Civil War? <laughs> you people. Um, Walter goes back to like rocks. <laughs> he goes back to caveman days. <laughs> uh, actually, Lee, Lee Harvey Lee Oswald used the uh, M, uh, um, uh, the Italian Carcana. That's what Lee, Lee Harvey Oswald used. So. Oh, so why someone was comparing that to 
Yeah, yeah, kind of, uh, sort of. It's on the same size wise, but yeah, he's yeah. a Carcano. Yeah. So anyway, next week I'm going to be in training. I am going to put up videos. I want to, um, you know, ask everyone when those videos go up. What I'm going to do is put up put up a bunch of videos of the last 15 minutes of this show, just so folks can see what we've been doing. That we have fun all the way up to the end. So I want to encourage everyone that's been joining us here. When those videos go up. Uh, make sure you share those videos. Walter's sneaking in another gun. He's showing us. Make sure you share those videos, like them, share them with friends and all that kind of stuff. And uh, I will be throwing up social media stuff. I'm going to be uh, training with Reed over at Valor Ridge. So I don't know if there's anyone out there that's going to be there. I'm doing the rifleman class next week. So I've got to get ready for that, get out there, do my training etc and all that so for the most part i won't be here but i'll try to come in towards the end of the week if i can so there you go all right walter anything you want to <laughs> um i can't feel it <laughs> oh i'll, I'll get you yeah, um, yeah. Uh, anything tuned, you want to stay, plug before we go stay tuned for more adapters um got some other stuff we're working on facebook instagram i'll post that stuff up when I, we make it and it comes off the press um yeah absolutely i'll repost it on my social media yeah, yeah, yeah. We're working on some stuff, so stay tuned. Um, that's it from me, I think. Okay, cool. All right, so I want to thank everyone that's here in the chat, everyone that's been watching. Thank you guys so much. Like I said, one more time, a reminder, I won't be here next week, so just let people know. But we are going to put up some things. I'll work on stuff over the weekend and get that up. Okay, and uh, I want to thank everyone that sponsors the channel. That is Safety Harbor. You know, that guy right there. <laughs> Uh, ran CLP, <laughs> Safety Harbor Firearms, not Safety Harbor, but Safety Harbor yeah, Firearms. Yeah, Safety Harbor is sponsoring them. <laughs> yeah, Safety Harbor Firearms, Ran CLP, Andrews Custom Leather, and of course, Big Daddy Guns. Big, Big Daddy, Daddy Guns, you know, Big Daddy Guns, see the logo right there, Big Daddy Guns, here in Gainesville, Florida, they give us access to this space. And uh, what, what gun is this? Somebody tell me, give you a patch. Okay, who knows what the gun this is if you're out, if you're out to get a patch, Real quick, and you haven't gotten one, tell Walter what this gun is. Let's see if someone can figure that out. I'll give you two patches. Oh, boy. Two patches now. He's up in the uh, ante. The gnome and the other thing, yeah. Uh, Walter, uh, let's see. Uh, G41? Negative. VZ? Negative. G43? Negative. I wish, but no. <laughs> okay, lots of people saying VZ. I don't, you know. No, I have one of those, but it's not that. Yeah. You want to know? Uh -huh. What? Close. It's a Hakeem. Oh, there you go. Hakeem. There you go. There you go. Right. So, Far all right, it. guys. So, you know what? Um, that's basically it. Oh, you know what? I should never forget the folks, Walter. Oh, Patreon. The, the Patreon dudes. We're Patreon slash Hank Strange. And everyone who's supporting us on Patreon, we appreciate you. Patreon. Yeah, and we have some cool things that we're going to be doing for you coming up. So, that's pretty much it, Walter. You know how we end this. Throw up the deuces. Bye-bye. We are out of here. Peace. Bye -bye. See ya. See ya.